Here's some Neil Rule. Sit back and relax. It's time for your daily dose of Big D Energy. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Big D Energy right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule, Sam Flannel, in for the birthday boy, Darren McCarty. Flannel, what's Happy up? Happy birthday, D-Mac. Ha. Ah. All things considered, I'm just ba- glad to be back here with the guys. There you go. Abs- oh, absolutely. KG in the house. KG, what it do? What How up, you living? Though? I'm good, man. What's up with you? I'm straight. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah, hair dryer broke on me this morning, so y'all got Do-Rag Kenny. Today. Do-Rag Kenny. So, I like Do-Rag Kenny. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. But yeah, you, we, we making it rock, man. <laughs> you got, what is, that, is that a velvet? What is what is oh, that one? It, it's velvet. Yes. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Ha-ha! I like it, man. Thank you. Spencer Raxter. What's going on? I was told Michigan State's a hockey school. Yeah, it's, it's tough to beat a team five times in a row. In the same in season? The same year, yeah. <laughs> no, but that be that I, I say that jokingly and begrudgingly, but it's true. Like hard It is to hard to beat a team, a team five, five times, times in, a row. in one season in a row. Um, but Michigan, you know, hats off to them. They outplayed Michigan State in that third period. It was uh it was a great season for Michigan State. Obviously, a big turnaround from what this team was a couple years ago to what Adam Nightingale has them playing as now. But, yeah, Michigan just outplayed outplayed us in third period flat out. Does Augustine know he's not with the Red Wings yet? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, that was a nasty, nasty pass. From, yes, it was. From Mazur. That was, that was an insane pass, man. So, shout out, shout out to Michigan. They flat out won. Uh, Danny G, excuses, excuses, LOL. It is hard to beat a team five times in a row. It is. I, I'm with you on that. Uh, Jeff Reviews, go blue. And jump into that WoodwardSports.com chat thread as well. Subscribe to the Woodward Sports YouTube channel and get in there. And uh, no, we got a lot lined up for you today. The Tigers, 162-0, hey. and 0, still in play, Sam Flannel. Yeah, absolutely. What a better way to start your season than sweeping your division rivals on the road. I don't care if it's the lowly White Sox. That is not easy to do. That White Sox team, man, and I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah. I love that they are in the dredges right now. Hey. I hate the White Sox. Hate them. They are, they are the Minnesota Vikings of football for me. No, I don't, I don't blame you for that at all. And uh, I just got to say this as well. Nobody would have been happier about the 3-0 and start for the Tigers than one John Kloss. All right. Yeah. Yes. No, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, John Kloss. Um, yeah. Funeral arrangements are set for Thursday, as a matter of fact. And um, certainly prayers for that family because they're going on a journey right now that yeah. nobody ever wants to be going on. And, you know, it is. It's, it's one of those things where you don't know what to say, man. You yeah. just don't. Yeah, I mean, I remember he walked in here on day one, and I was actually the first person that he saw, and he kind of inquired about job or intern opportunities. So, of course, I led him to our guy, Stick. Yeah. And then he just looked him right in the eye and was like, do you have any job or internships available? And he was like 20 years old. And Stick kind of asked him, like, what can you do? And then Jean Claus says anything. And at first when I was overhearing, I'm like, ooh, wrong answer, wrong answer, kid, <laughs> wrong answer. But God bless him. The next time I saw him, we were at uh, Lawrence Tech. We were doing a remote show for Imani and Edwards for a, a high school football game. One of the teams was the, uh, was the school where Ryan Armani's uh, nephew plays for. And there he was. He was helping me set things up, helping me with the, with the flags and everything. And I'm just like, God bless him. He actually did it. He walked in here at age 20, demanded an internship, got one, and has been with us ever since. No, abso- I would have absolutely. never had the balls to do something like that at 20 years old. At 20 years old, I was unmotivated. No chance I would have done something like that. So I was always very proud of him from, from the beginning. And one other quick story, if, if, if you don't mind about John. Cross. No, go ahead, man. You know how much they, that this kid loved the Tigers? The 2023 draft party. That was a pretty big draft for the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. Coming off a winning season, hoping to... Uh, add some foundational pieces for a team that can, would eventually win the division, compete for a Super Bowl, and the Lions did just that. This kid was watching the Tigers on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> this kid like, 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 could not care less about the Detroit Lions. If this was a 9-14 and 14 Tigers team, I, 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 looked up, I looked up the date. I like coordinated it with them. That was about to lose to the, Bal- to the Baltimore Orioles, and all this kid cares, cared about was watching the, the – uh, watching the Detroit Tigers, 
And at the time, I'm just kind of like, man, Klaus, you're, you're kind of a, a, a glutton for punishment. But now looking back, it's just one of those things where it's like, that, that team never really loved him back. Neither did the Pistons, but he was with them no matter, no matter what. So uh, I, hope he, I hope he enjoyed those uh, three wins, wherever you are, Klaus. And also, too, props to him for you being the first person he meets here and yet still <laughs> deciding to press on at Woodward. That, that's pretty impressive as well. Hey, I mean, hey. Shout, shout, shout out, Klaus. Shout out, Klaus. One of, one of the <laughs> nicest human beings you'll ever meet. And uh, if I didn't say it enough, thank you for doing our Woodward Sports Clips and our segment clips. Yeah, no lot. doubt. No it's doubt. No lot. doubt about that. And again, prayers to their family, yeah, man, for, uh, because they're setting out on a journey that nobody wants to be yeah, on. And, so. and uh, more specifically, the uh, Wake Up Woodward Clips and stuff. We're, 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 we're a new show trying to, trying to get out there. And not everybody's going to watch the whole show, but some people are going to watch those uh, segment clips and hopefully, hopefully uh, get, get into us and get, get into us. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I got I to gotta say, say one more thing because I want, you to, I want you guys to kind of get to know this kid a little bit more. Spencer, some of my favorite memories at Woodward Sports were those heavyweights days where I would sit on the chair. Mm -hmm. those, were, those were electric. But that was kind of back before I even really had much of a name here. I was just I was I was doing the sound for you guys. I was doing the sound for Armani and Edwards. I believe, I believe I was I was uh, doing both. And uh, John Kloss actually he he uh, came up to me one day because he wasn't in the office a ton, but when he was, he definitely made his presence known. He just goes like, "Man, you say the craziest stuff on air." And of course, I laughed because I wasn't the first time I heard this. But then he uh, gave me some complimentary words, and at the time. You know, when you're first starting out, you're kind of a little bit insecure about on air, like wondering, oh, my God, did I fumble this word? You know, I know when, whenever John had his opportunity on the heavyweights, he shined pretty much from day one and looked relaxed. Mm -hmm. I was not that way. I was tense. I was, like, nervous. But those words from John actually meant more than he probably even knew. I always had positive reinforcement from, like, the heavyweights themselves, but not a ton from the outside world. And I know it's more about what I said than how I said it, but John's words kind of gave me more confidence than probably he even realized because he's just like a kid who was like 11 years younger than me. But his words meant a lot. So uh, RIP, John. Sorry to like get on my soapbox and hijack the show. No, no. I mean, it's we, we've talked about this like yeah. as, a, as a network. This is why we're a little bit different, yeah. you know, because everybody's going through it right now. Yeah. So, uh, again, and thanks, too, to everybody in the chat and everything, all the social media stuff, uh, the condolences out there. We, we do – we do appreciate it for sure. Uh, Danny G says, Sam, love the haircut. Was much needed. Yo, that, that, that's actually facts. It was looking a little bit crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I remember uh, seeing myself on camera the last couple of days and being like, you know what? I, I, I think people saying I looked like a homeless person was a little bit aggressive, but I'm not going to completely dismiss that as baseless. <laughs> I was looking a little bit rough, so... Uh, <laughs> Needed that haircut. No, absolutely. That guy, 62. DCFC ball in two. That's right. DCFC, another win. Uh, yeah. Had the opportunity to call that on Saturday night. The Michigan Panthers are 1-0. I know, right? 64-yard field goal to win the game, I was told. Are yeah. you saying bring him home? Br What's his name? Bates? Last name yeah, Bates? Bates. Yeah. Don't let him leave the building. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. And um, If you want to go to break a little bit early, Ryan just sent me a video a tribute. For John, so we could play that after the reads. If oh, you, very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh we will we will we will certainly do that coming back uh coming back from the break. Oh, I, I do want to do this too. We'll 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 do let's do this real quick because we remember on Thursday after the Tigers won, and we're gonna get into the Tiger stuff and some Lion stuff as well. Remember on Thursday when I got all the tweets, Benny, I saw you liking them and stuff yeah. like that. Uh you guys were quick to I don't know why your first thought is to go to social media to tweet at me, but you do, and I like it. You know, hey, man, I'm, I'm down. I'm down to roll with it. Uh, I was told Javi was back. Ooh, uh, quote, mean. El Mago is back. <laughs> he didn't right? hurt him. I'll say that. Right? No, he was back. That's what I was told. He was back. So here's what I'm willing to do, and I've decided I'm going to do this every single day of the baseball season. Is Javi back? So I figured last <laughs> night I would take a look. And... um. As a matter of fact, come to find out, he is, in fact, not back. No. Uh, Javi got, did get a hit yesterday to improve his average to 154. Uh, has yet to drive in a run. Obviously, yet to hit a home run. Has, has a, a crushing OPS of 308. Yeah. Um, so, I'm confused. Is Javi back, Sam Flannel? This is Javi Watch 2024. 
every single day of the show in the open. I'm doing it. <laughs> He's most certainly not back. But as I've said before, the nature of baseball is no matter how great you are or no matter how bad you are, you only get to bat one out of every nine times. I mean, conversely, like I'll, I'll give you this example. Javi Baez, obviously that 154 average in a three-game series, that's not good. But the Tigers were 3-0. and oh, And in the first game, Javi did score the only run partially due to some uh, pretty pretty nifty base running by a hobby by so I got to give him credit for that conversely Barry Bonds maybe the best baseball player to ever play also only hit one out of every nine times and never won a World Series not his fault Shohei Otani has never played in the playoffs and Mike Trout's teams have never won a playoff game my point is is that one guy is not going to hurt or help your team as much as in other sports so that's why I've always said Javi Baez most certainly is terrible and is not back but I don't think it's going to cost the Tigers the division. I still don't. Why would I think any otherwise after they just swept the White Sox on the road in the first series? Well, good. We'll have some discussion about it coming yes. up a, a little bit a little bit later on. Um, Jake says, El Mago never was back. No, 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 Jake. That's not what I was told. <laughs> on Thursday, I was told he was, in fact, back. He was played a major role in them getting a win. He did. He did. He hasn't it, hurt the team. Hasn't hurt the I'll team. I'll say yet. that. No, his, his numbers are awful, and you know I'm a numbers guy, but... Uh, that first game. What, when he hit 250 and struck out once? <laughs> so scored, the only, scored the only run. Great, good enough to win. If it was anybody but Javi, you would at least concede that point. But you won't because you, like, you... And it's okay to hate Javi, but you, I think, irrationally hate him. Yeah. You do. We'll discuss. <laughs> we will. We'll discuss. <laughs> I need to see where you at anyway um, in all this Tiger... Uh, all right, Tiger we'll lay fan. it down when we when we get back. Obviously, we uh, we have our tribute to to John Claus that we will play. We'll get into the Tigers discussion. There is some lion stuff as well. I'm falling behind on the draft uh, stuff. I'm I'm not going to lie to you. This is weird. Like your teams are winning and stuff like that. There's a March meter to get to. I want to check in with the, how the teams did in March. Mm -hmm. uh, one team not so great. One team not so great. Uh, absolutely. There was one team that was even worse though. A team that you like. Ooh. We'll discuss. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Yeah. That's facts. That's All right. facts. We, we will discuss when we go back. Tell them about Dispo. Absolutely. Visit Dispo Dispensary today for exclusive new deals and experience a team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the date for 420 at Dispo Dispensary. Dispo is putting on epic events with over a thousand giveaways at each location. Stay tuned for more details. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Make sure you join us Friday, April 5th at 9 a.m. for Grand Slam Fest as we watch the currently undefeated Detroit Tigers in their home opener. It's the Detroit Opera House parking lot. You can get your tickets at GrandSlamDetroit.com. Again, it's on Friday, this Friday, April 5th, starting at 9 a.m. It's Grand Slam Fest. Yeah, I'd rather get laughed at for trying than to stand on the sideline and just watch. Whether I look like, like a dumbass or... I, I, I fail or I'm like cringy at the end of the day like we're, we're all gonna die like who cares like uh, that's kind of my my thing for life it's just yeah. I'd rather get made fun of for trying than just be too afraid to try it all Oh, 
hard though. <laughs> physically drizzled. He's physically drizzled, baby. <laughs> needs to be put in better positions to succeed and I don't think he's getting that opportunity right now. This mofo spin. He's spin. Oh my land he's spin for sure. Poor oh, OJ. I believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Take your feet. Stand standing. seconds. Back out of here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule and Sam Flannel and KG and Spencer Raxter here as always. And uh, again, rest in peace to uh, John Kloss and certainly prayers up to his family as they're about to go on a journey that you can't even imagine. So um, again, thanks for everything that he did here and work bonds, man. <sighs> like, you know, that was, yeah. that was tough. It was tough to get through. And um, mm. again, you know, what do you say, Flannel? Do you, you know, it's over too quick. You yeah, know? I mean, shout out to Ryan and Noah for making yeah. that. That couldn't have been couldn't easy, have been easy, man. Easy to do. Like I said, every time you saw you saw him, he was smiling. He was happy, even though he loved the Tigers and the Pistons. He was always just a very happy, kind individual. And uh, <laughs> even even though he liked the Tigers and the Pistons, <laughs> I mean, even not, though he was still was, happy, it's but enough to make you not learn. But that's like, <laughs> but that's like a, a, that, that, that's a testament to him. And the fact that uh, he was able to uh, come in, get his uh, airtime, shout out to the heavyweights, make some really great points about the Pistons and Isaiah Stewart at the time as well, and just look so relaxed and uh and uh comfortable i remember too looking back at some of his appearances on the heavyweight show he would be on the couch when we had that handheld mic just like kicking back holding the mic like he was in a rat battle and just let's <laughs> and just uh just uh just 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 uh chilling and i saw in one of those uh in one of those clips it kind of reminded me of something i know our old our old uh, friend rohelio was very happy to have john claus in in house and i know that I would see Rogelio and John John on those like Tigers podcasts and roundtables, and like I said, for such a team that's been so terrible for pretty much all of John Kloss's formative years, he just loved to talk about them, and he did he did a great job on these shows. He was one of the more valuable members and the kindest human being to ever walk the halls of Woodward Sports. Yeah. RIP again. Right again, rest in peace. Um, the Detroit Tigers, though, uh, as we said, they are 3-0 and for the first time, I think, what, since 2016 or something yeah. like that? It's yeah. been a minute uh, since, since they were 3-0. and They got the sweep over the Chicago White Sox. Big Cuz says El Mago is the GOAT. Stop, you guys. <laughs> Just stop. Javi, watch. Every single day. I'm, but I'm popping it up keep, there. They're going to keep doing it, dude. Well, uh, that's fine. Uh, every single day we're doing Javi watch. And you know what? I'm going to wait to do the Javi thing in a minute. Because here's what I do want to get to with this team, this bullpen in particular. And this is this is where, and you guys look, KG, let's just get into it right now. Because it. just say what you want to say. Say what you want to say. Say it. Say it. <laughs> Say what you want to say to me right now. Look me in the eye and say it like a man. Well, first off, the third base production. Uh, how about that third base? Third base looks Shout good. out. Um, uh, you wanted the J.D. Martinez move, but we've no, been see, this is, now, now look. I know it's only I'll three sit down games. and have the discussion. It's only three games. No, but. I'll sit down and have the discussion with you. You're not going to do that. You're not going to pin it to a name because I specifically went out of my way to say I'm not dying on the hill okay. for a name. Right. It's the philosophy. I'll give now you proceed. That. I'll give you that. But like I said, there's nothing you can do to change it. So what should you do? You should try to at least see where Kerry Carpenter is this season. And so far, he so has far, so delivered. Good. 
So far, so, so good. So far, you know, so you can't be better. Andy Abanez, he's been killing it. Yes. Uh, third base doesn't look so even. Geo, Geo looks good. It, third base doesn't look so in doubt that we all thought it was so in doubt. You know, so I just want to know where you at with the Tigers, man. Are you believe? Are you starting to believe? I know it's only three games, but does the young talent at least show you signs that they can improve? Here's here's the other side of that. They still have AJ Hinch. That's a guy true. that I'll ride or die for. And he's pulling the strings. And he's pulling the strings, so, Sam Flannel. Shouldn't you have more confidence because he's pulling the strings? No, absolutely. I've always had confidence in AJ Hinch. He's a top three manager in this game, man. Top three manager in this game. And Flannel, people can say what they want, but the bottom line is this. I've said this time after time after time. AJ Hinch is a six, seven, eight win swing having him as a manager. I truly believe that. I do. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned A.J. Hinch because uh, I've got a list of some things that A.J. Hinch himself did that really helped this team and maybe led to some wins. First of all, the three different lineup combinations. I understand that the bats weren't great in games one and three, but still, they're 3-0. and oh. And uh, the bullpen, which uh, as a manager, you play a role in deciding uh, who, to, who to take out, when to take them out, who to put in. The bullpen was pretty damn dominant, and I know we will get to them later, and pretty damn dominant is an understatement. They were pretty much lights out mm -hmm. but uh here's a couple examples one of them is having jason foley as the closer and not alex lang as i said to to begin the well, year hey hold up sam flannel sorry, sorry i'm gonna interrupt go you for ahead. a go second ahead. here but since, since you since you were on it uh cats yeah. neil with a dumb take aj hinch is nothing without elite talent oh really <laughs> Because what would it? What would any run of the mill manager have done in the closer situation? They would have put Jason Foley in for three three batters. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I was actually going to uh, get to that. Foley as the closer instead of Alex Lang. First of all, looks like a good move because you can say what we want about Alex Lang and how much how good he looked at times. Yeah. Overall, he had an ERA that was higher than you'd like as a closer. I think it was three fifty eight or three sixty eight. He blew six saves and he had a high walk rate. And as a closer, that's the last thing you want is a high walk rate because uh, you 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 give up runners you uh, blow saves but also when you look at the uh, first game of the season it was um it was Andrew Chafin pitched the eighth and instead of putting Jason Foley out there to start the ninth AJ Hinch thought that the lefty Chafin lefty Ben Benintendi matchup was a better matchup to get the first out and what did Andrew Chafin do good morning good afternoon good night you're out Andrew yep. Benatendi, and then the last two were obviously Andrew got Benatendi. by got by uh, Jason Foley. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry again. I love that the White Sox are in this position. I yeah, oh, I love. I hate the White Sox. Mm -hmm. I hate the White Sox with their stick. Like people come at Detroit all the time, and you know what? Guaranteed rate field yeah. or U.S. Cellular, wherever they play, it's a very very fine baseball stadium. Once, you, once the L train pulls up and you step over the used needles and everything like that and the puddles Damn. of piss to fucking get into the stadium, it's a very fine stadium. And people want to come at Detroit all the time? You ever rolled out to guaranteed rate field or wherever it is? Yeah. You ever do that? I never hear that narrative around there, though, by the way. I love it. I hate the White Sox. Hate them. Yeah, as, they're as, falling apart. As Spencer Raxter would say, rest in piss, Chicago White Sox, <laughs> because they are cooked. Yeah, and they ain't yeah. coming back anytime soon. Sorry, Just proceed. The they really are, though. At, only after after three games, they're they're yeah. not mathematically eliminated. No, but, they are. <laughs> yeah. No, they they absolutely are. I don't see it getting but, any better. They might as well be. But uh, yes, I actually agree with you. Wrigley Field is awesome, and the atmosphere around it is awesome. But uh, but the sh I think it's guaranteed rate field is it's 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 night and day. And it certainly doesn't have the atmosphere. It sucks. Even remotely close. The to place America. sucks. It does. There's nothing to do around I think we're it. Going to um. One of my friend, my friend Scott's bachelor party. We're going to Chicago, and I think we're gonna go to a White Sox. You're game. gonna go to the White Sox game Just because it's like you can get tickets for ten bucks. Yeah, and to yeah. go to Wrigley, it'd be yeah. like a yeah. hundred bucks. I've I've been there a couple yeah. times. Like yeah. I've been there a couple times. I've never been to Chicago. Shout out Southside. You're yeah. gonna love it. Bars are open till five a.m. Oh hell yeah, Spenny. Like you can, if you want something, you can find it. Yeah. Let's just say it like mm -hmm. that. Yes, and uh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, he did. But the thing is, in in yesterday's game, it was the uh, same thing. Um, Tyler Holton pitched the eighth, and after the Tigers took the took a three two lead going into the bottom of the ninth, it was the same situation. It was the tight. It was the uh, uh, Gavin Sheets was coming up to bat for the Chicago White Sox to open the ninth inning, and he's a lefty. And AJ Hinch decided let Tyler Holton get the first out, and then leave the next two to Jason Foley. And what did Tyler Holton do? He struck out Gavin Sheets, and uh, 
Jason Foley got the next two, one, two, three. And speaking of that top of the ninth inning, this was another string pulled by A.J. Hinch that was uh, that ended up working out swimmingly. With runners on first and second, two outs, 2-2 two, two tie in the top of the ninth inning, Parker Meadows is coming up to bat. And Parker mm-hmm. Meadows did not have a good series. He was 0 for 4 in that game. He was 1 for 10 in that series. And A.J. Hinch decided, I'm going to pinch hit Andy Abanez. And what did Andy Abanez do? hit the game winning single. So those are some really tangible examples of AJ Hinch pulling some strings, doing what he can from the managerial position and helping the Tigers get some wins. So with a lesser manager, I think the Tigers may have only took two out of three. And I really mean that. Those were important moves that AJ Hinch made. Parker Meadows Meadows wasn't hitting. And Andy Abanez rewarded, rewarded AJ Hinch's faith and got the game winning game-winning RBI single. Do I think Jason Foley would have been able to get those uh, all three outs in an inning? Sure. But it was the conventional thing. And A.J. Hinch liked the lefty-lefty matchups to start the inning better. And it worked. The Tigers are 3-0, and and it is wonderful. Shout-out to A.J. Hinch. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and Catspot, uh, you're, vi- you're vibing for me right now, man, because you're going to work for me because you're setting it all up. Uh, cat spot. Hinch doesn't hold players accountable. Baez has quit on Detroit multiple times. Th- this is a great avenue for where for where I wanted to go with this. Do you guys think that maybe deep down that AJ Hinch is having like a reverse money ball moment to where I think he's rolling Baez out there every single day to say, look, something needs to be done about this guy. Mm-hmm. Something neat, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. may, maybe it's almost like a, to upper management, to ownership, to say, "Look, we're trotting this dude out here. We're still winning, and I got to deal with this guy. This lineup has to deal with this black hole yeah. that's hitting 154 again." <laughs> I, for I, real, I think I, there might be something to that. I've said this. I've said this before that it behooves you for Javi to keep playing behooves. like he's playing. <laughs> behooves. It behooves you word. to keep uh, Bobby Javi playing like he is because. Oh eventually you will have to make a move. And like I said, I don't think A.J. Hinch goes another year with with him bringing the, the lineup down. I just don't see it. I, and I wonder about that. I honestly do. Yeah. That maybe there's almost like a reverse money ball effect. It could be. Well, it's he, he's certainly not a player that seems to fit in with like the, the organizational philosophy started by Scott Harris and then with uh, A.J. Hinch. So as long as the Tigers are winning, I mean, I'm not mad at him for doing it. If they start to lose and Javi continues his poor play, I might be like, A.J. Hinch, you might want to... No, 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 no. But see, he's 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 blameless in all this. Is he, be- though? Yes. Because uh... as long as... Then why does the organization jettison him out into space, then? No, because the last couple of years, the Tigers... Last year, they had a successful season, given their given their uh, expectations. And this year, they're 3-0. and And what did A.J. Hinch do with Javier Baez last year to have a successful season in multiple occasions? Sat his ass yeah. down on the yeah. fucking bench. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you if he's gonna do it again, I, I assume he'll do it again this year. But it's last year he did it because of egregious errors and mistakes and just mental lapses that the, he made the base running the one is the one that jumps out at yeah, me. Yeah. He In hasn't Toronto. done that yet this year, at least. Like he's just not good. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like he just can't hit the ball at all. Right. He hasn't made any just boneheaded plays. So we'll see when he gets a day off. And I asked, like, can Gio Urshela play short? Can Abanez play short? Can literally anybody yeah. in yeah. the area play shortstop? It's, yeah. Because my dad told me, he was like, Abanez is making, you know, a case for more playing time. And I was yes. like, and how I many more know, throws? Gio Urshela looked pretty damn good when he was out there as well. How many say. more throws do I got to see two bouncing over there to first base? Mm. Anybody noticing that at all? Mm-hmm. McKinstry, and, yeah, McKinstry made a couple. But he also made a great play. I mean, that double play. To save the the tie game, I think it was in the sixth inning with the bases loaded. McKinstry got the ball in the short hop, tagged the third base bag, and then threw it over to Torque. And Torque had one of the best scoops I've seen in a while yeah. to get that, to turn that. But, yeah, I mean, that's why you have Urshela. If you're worried about throws, if you're worried about, you know, hops, so Torque has to dig. That's why you brought in Urshela. He is by far the best defensive third baseman you have. Yeah, And so we'll see. It's looking like. When it's a lefty on the mound, it's going to be a Banyas. When it's a righty, it's yeah. going to be your show. Which is yeah. what they said coming in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, like it wasn't the third base thing, Kenny. It was it was the whole, it was the philosophical angle of it. I get it, but I also think you didn't believe in a Banyas. 
What do you mean? I don't think you. I don't think you really support the young talent. I don't think you're fully behind them. How many times are we gotta go through this, Kenny? I'm just How many saying, times? I get it's the philosophy. I'll tell you who I'm. You know who I'm not fully behind in this organization. And it's Javi Baez. I know that. That's one. But also Kerry Carpenter. No, 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 and I'm going to watch. Okay. I'm going to put a ton of time into it, man. Okay. I absolutely am. Tell them about Guardian Alarm. Absolutely. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. 24-7 professional monitoring. Call us anytime, day or night, and know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. Technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. Guardian Alarm your local security experts. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds, constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust, allowing flour with only the highest terps making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis, check us out at your local retailer or GloriousCanna.com. Glorious. Keeping it pushing here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, and Sam Flannel, and KG, and Spencer Raxter, and all of you in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread happy to have you all with us um people like the uh chicago white Sox discussion i guess yeah. they were they were happy they, about that they're probably my most hated team in the division too honestly i don't know i i never really had a disdain for the royals i liked the royals teams when they were good with the players yeah. that they had on yeah. their eric Hosmer, jeff uh alex gordon i liked bo jackson when i was a little yeah. kid like I, I i never hated the royals either never hated the royals guardians i, I don't like Twins, I hated Joe Maurer just because he was so damn good. Yeah. But the Whites, I always hate. Paul Konerko, I used to want to punch him in the face. Oh, every one of them. Yeah. They had A.J. Pruszynski. And A.J. Yeah. Pruszynski, yeah. No. And, like, I hated I hated the Twins more when they had the Metrodome. Yeah. Because they would they would have all those fast guys, and they would, like, hit the ball into the ground, and it'd bounce, it'd bounce mm -hmm. super high in the air, and everybody yeah. would be safe every time. I'm like, this isn't even real baseball. <laughs> Did they have, like, yeah. Christian Guzman or whatever? Was, <laughs> yeah. was, was, was oh uh, one, one of them? He was, <laughs> Yeah. Just do a... But yeah, the white once they, once they tore down the Metrodome, yeah. then I didn't hate the Twins as much. No, oh, and it's just a terrible like watching a game even on TV in the Metrodome for baseball was just it just didn't seem right. Plexiglass on top of the right. like, Target, yeah. Target Field is nice though. Yeah. Target Field, I mean, I've never been there, yeah. but it looks really. It nice. does, yeah. Uh, sure. And yeah, guard, the Guardians, I've never I've never liked them. I've never, of course, uh, they're probably number two. I would say, probably White Sox, Guardians, Twins. Royals is my. I mean the the Guardians beat the piss out of us so bad. Did, yeah. yeah, like I I think they won like thirty in a row at one time or some ridiculous. crazy ass number. It was mm -hmm. it was unbelievable. Um, I remember too. I was at a game, and Tigers were winning. I think seven to four in the ninth inning at Progressive, Ooh. and the bases were loaded with two outs, and Jim Tomey was up, and I got up and <sighs> left. Yeah. Because I knew, yeah, and he hit a grand slam to center field that just I I heard the crowd cheer and I'm like uh, I I knew it. Jim Tomey was a douche too. 
he destroyed us. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Maybe Always. the number one tiger killer. Yeah, him or like Billy Butler. Billy Butler used to rake against us too for some reason. Paul Canerco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canerco for sure. Joe Creedy. Yeah. Joe Look Creedy. up Joe Creedy's Nelson numbers. Cruz. Mm-hmm. Nelson Cruz used to yeah. still. Yeah. I, he's tiger probably, I think killer. he's still Nelson Cruz league. did that to everybody. I think though. he's still in the league and he's like 45, <laughs> but he yeah, still man. probably hit a homer against the Tigers. He's a modern day Julio Franco. All right, now we're getting we're getting a vortex now. Like and people are we're losing people by the second. Um, Harold Williams, Kenta Maeda, uh, definitely not the number two pitcher. He got yeah. shelled for sure. He, he looked bad. I'll give you the Kenta Maeda one, but how about Jack Flaherty, though? Good, yeah, 100%. Jack Flaherty, looked, Jack Flaherty looked great. For uh, for some reason, I did not picture Jack Flaherty as such a Chad. Like, he, he, <laughs> he looks like a total Chad to me. Oh, like, I, can't, I keep picturing uh, someone the Tigers had a couple years ago as a pitcher. It's like, this just like, I don't know. He, I did not picture Jack Flaherty to have that kind of aura about him, but he he had seven strikeouts. I mean, the mm-hmm. umpire definitely helped him out with a few of those. But hey, man, I'll take it. <laughs> that ump was calling every low strike yeah. imaginable, man. I, I'm just excited for Tuesday. See my boy back on the tit, Casey Mize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Star of the yeah. season. Yeah, man. Full staff. Yeah. Yep. Another. Chris Olson. We'll see if he can continue. What he did last year, yeah, that should be good. But I'm another not... favorable series, right? The yeah. A's, right? The Mets. Oh, Mets. the Mets. Oh, still favorable. Still favorable. Yeah, haven't yeah. won a game. And then the A's. Can we talk about that for a second? I know I don't want to lose too many viewers, but like the boycott that A's fans are doing. Yeah, they're, they're like they're, they're going to the parking up. lot. Yeah, yeah, but not going in the game. The, the it's first. like me every time I went to Western Michigan. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> like, I, if you don't know, for different reasons, the A's yeah. are already confirmed to move to Las Vegas. Yeah, so their fans are boycotting the games and just not going. They're hassling. It's like a picket line. Yeah, yeah. like they're hassling people that go into the game. There was like ten <laughs> people at opening day. It was Jesus. insane. Good for them though. Yeah. No, and the, well, you know this this isn't Oakland. Sports Network. I'll like save my thoughts on the A's. I'm sure you're you're dying to hear them, but uh, we can move on. <laughs> no, it, it is. I kind of like it. I like it. I too. like it too. Yeah. I was I was crushed for. It. You remember that get that like random game? They just all decided to show up. Yeah. And it was like a sellout and everything. Yeah. It was like their funeral for the yeah. for the A's. Yeah. I, that was that was great. That was a great event. But yeah, t- tough for them, man. The Oakland A's, dude. It's like crazy. Yeah. yeah. They're a good franchise. Yeah, they a are. great franchise. I think they won. They they have three peated in the seventies. They mm-hmm. won one in the in the in the late eighties. They had an entire Moneyball philosophy, which was made into a book and into a movie. I mean, they're a storied franchise. They are. They they really are. They've had some lean years lately, but don't you forget about old uh, Jose Canseco and uh, and uh, Mark McGuire and in He's the seventies, Vita Blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, big cuz age. I think AJ is literally trying to embarrass Javi, and good for him to show everyone a millionaire that doesn't give two ishes about his job or city he represents. Uh, get him TF out of here. Goodbye, El Mago. Um, now that I don't think he's like trying to embarrass him, but I think he is rolling him out there. And look, big cuz, like you guys know at the core, I'm with you on the Javi thing. I will stop short. I'll get off the highway at doesn't. I think he cares. I just think he's not good enough. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's gone. You know what I'm saying? He does play. Like, he does show up. He doesn't do the whole, my hamstrings pulled and I'm going to sit out and stuff right, like right. that. He does play. He's just not good enough. But you know what? This is professional sports, man. It's a big boy business. No. And when you when you cost more than what you produce, then it's over. And he costs more than he produced. Yep. And it's over. And I know that you love war and everything like that. The fact that he was a, a plus half game war last year is absurd, and it tells you that war is a meaningless stat. It's not a meaningless It's a meaningless stat. It's not You a meaningless tell me stat. that you wouldn't have been better off with anybody else. You tell me last year you would have been better off with Ryan Kreidler at shortstop. I'll disagree with you a million percent, and I'll, I'll die on the sword. I'll die on the sword for that. No, that's, that, that's fair. I, war takes into account something that I don't care about as much as some. It takes into account defense. And as much as you want to say about his errors, what that tells me and what you see is that Javi does get to some balls that a lot of shortstops wouldn't get to. It's, it, it's more of a, like, like when it comes to Javi, his offensive war, I believe, is in the negatives. Or it's, or it's I, I think the year before it was in the slight positives. I think it was in the negatives last year. It's more, it's more a testament to that, he does make some errors. He does have some careless throws, but he is a good defender when it comes to uh, just like getting to some to some hard hit or some softly hit ground balls that it turns them into outs instead of base hits. Because so. if you, if you go by WAR, then Kenny Lofton's as good as Mickey Mantle. 
right. if you go by war. Well, but Kenny Lofton also had, like, a really long career. And I think, again, that's more of a testament to, like, how, like, center field, how, how he played. And I know Mickey Mantle, he got hurt early in his career and basically played through a bad knee, so he wasn't a good defender. But I just wanted to put that out there, though. Um, but no, but anyway, but I'm glad to see some people are kind of jumping on that train a little bit. Um, WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Danny G. Oakland has lost two teams to Las Vegas. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. that's rough. Dante 151, it is sad what's happening in Oakland. You just hate to see it. But yeah, they're um, they're they're going to... Obviously, they're going to be leaving. I, I wonder if they're going to go to Sacramento or something yeah. like that and play for a little bit. They lost three, right? The, the, Warriors, the Warriors went to San yeah, the Francisco. Went to San Francisco, so yeah. yeah, they lost three. That's tough crazy. break, man. It's tough. It's tough out there in those streets. Um, no, I do. Uh, I do have a question for general sports fans that we're going to get to as well. I want to get into the Red Wings though when when we come back because mm. I'm not I'm not as hopeless as a lot of other people are, and I'm going to explain the why on that. Right. I, I I got a feeling they're gonna they're gonna make it. Okay. I do, and I, I'm gonna explain it when we come back. Spenny, forgive me. We where are we at with this break right here? Uh, we are doing the morning show read. Morning show read. That's right, everybody. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Wake up, Woodward, and start your day with Wake Up Woodward Monday through Friday, eight to ten a.m. live on Woodward Sports. Kool Aid, Final Sam Broder, JB Smoove, and KG every morning. They cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk banner, live fan interaction, all on Detroit's number one sports network. Yes, Detroit's number one sports network. Woodward Sports. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. The rule here for woodwardsports.com slash shop. That's right, the Stoke Not Scared t-shirt. It's about that time. You should be rocking them all over the NFL draft in downtown Detroit. Coming up in what, about three weeks, right? As a matter of fact. So get geared up. Maybe you want to rock the Spencer Raxter Jack Campbell meat missile shirt. Maybe you want to do that, huh? Baseball, football, basketball, hockey. There's a Woodward Sports golf line as well. Rep it out there on the golf course. If it ever gets warm enough to play golf again, perhaps you could do that. Don't be fooled by that sunshine. It's still hoodie season. It's still beanie season. Get it in, everybody. WoodwardSports.com slash shop. All right, keeping it pushing here on a Monday. Neil Rule, flannel in for Darren McCarty. Happy birthday, D-Mac, by the way. Happy Happy birthday, birthday. Absolutely. Uh, we got, of course, Spencer Raxter and KG here in the house as well. All of you, get your thoughts out there in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, Kevin Bell, Neil is spot on about the White Sox. Answer 14, Neil appears to not like the White Sox. Hate them. Hate their existence. <laughs> and you know what? It pains me, too, because they got one of the doper logos in the game. They, yeah. Like, that hat they is do. cold. Jersey's clean, too. Yeah. yeah. Th- th- those hats, man. Yeah. I- and I feel bad because I would wear that hat. If it weren't the Chicago yeah. White Sox. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, they have those type of jerseys that kind of look like they would fit in in 1925 as well. And I kind of like that. I bought uh, a White Sox jersey. I do own a White Sox jersey. It's the... Uh, Get the hell out of here. The you. South Side ones, where it says South Side South on it. And it's a Michael Jordan South Side jersey. Oh, oh I can't be mad at that. I bought it to wear with a pair of <laughs> Deals, Jordan please. ones that I have. I've never worn it, though. Okay. Nice. I've never worn it. So you have it just to I have. I have it just to have, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And it was like I bought it off like Alibaba or whatever. For oh, like yeah. oh, all right. So it's not even yeah. real. No, right. no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not spending a hundred dollars on a White Sox jersey, but I bought it for like, oh, like I God. said, it's like twenty bucks. They got Luis Robert though. I yeah. mean, he's nice. He's nice. 
Sporty Gumble. We also took their play-by-play guy. That is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he is the goat. He is. Jason Benetti is the man. They call him so good. He calls a beautiful game. Yes, man. he does. Him and Craig Monroe. That was nice yesterday. You know, it was funny because um, somebody sent me a text and they're like, "Yo, Craig Monroe seems like he got a lot better." And the thing about that is, is that's the mark of a good play-by-play person. It doesn't matter who you work with; mm-hmm. you'll make them good. Yeah, like that's and that's. I think that's the biggest compliment as somebody who does that. The biggest compliment you can get as a play-by-play guy is like, "Wow, it doesn't matter who your partner is." You know, you make every you raise it all up, and then he does. He raises yeah. up the entire broadcast. He does. And Jason Benetti, there's no play-by-play man I'd rather have for the Tigers. You no. know how I know he's great because you see him calling everything across the board, national mm-hmm. games, and every sport, and he's he's phenomenal at what he does. Let's go Red Wings Sparty. Detroit's going 3 and 0 uh because it's April in the D. Hey. It is April in the D. April in the D. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's enough of that. Oh by the way, speaking of us, we were talking about March. Yeah. Um I saw that the Pistons won more games in March than the Red Wings did. That's such an indictment on the Red Wings. Yikes. I can't even you can't even put that into words. Pistons won 4. Red Wings won three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michigan basketball won zero. That's that's not surprising. Right. What was their last win? Wisconsin? What was that? Early February? Michigan State basketball won four. Yeah. yeah. Oakland won five. There. Again, not surprising. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of college, what's up with Purdue, man? Y'all keep saying Purdue go four. Well, all right. See, and <laughs> I got a lot of this saying, yesterday told, too. Okay, you know I what? Told, I'll man. save the I'll save the Red Wing stuff for the next segment. All right, everybody. All right, let's get into that too. I was told, As, and I was told. I I should have. I told you this. I believe KG, when Purdue goes up against Rick Barnes, somebody's gonna win. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. You know what I'm saying? No. Nope. You you you. Somebody's going to win when Purdue plays Rick Barnes. Somebody is gonna out Purdue Purdue, or someone's gonna out Rick Barnes Rick Barnes. I am not going to let you dismiss a Purdue Final Four run. And I get it. Prior to this season, you could clown on them all that you wanted. They were a one seed that lost to a 16. You could clown on Zach Eady all that you wanted for a lot of the same reason. He did. He does it in the Big Ten, but on the national stage, even though the Fairleigh Dickinson loss wasn't necessarily his fault, when you're Zach Eady, when you're a 7-4 behemoth and your team loses to a 16 seed, you're going to get all of the blame, and I can't even hate you for that. But this tournament... Purdue actually made a Final Four run. Purdue has actually exercised a lot of tournament demons. It's not that I take pleasure in saying that, but Matt Painter, he helped his legacy out. Zach Eady helped his legacy out. The Purdue basketball program as a whole helped raise their profile. So all I have to say to Purdue is congratulations, and whether you like it or not, Zach Eady's had one of the most dominant individual runs to the Final Four we've ever seen. Yeah, 22 free throws, real dominant. Okay, fine. <laughs> he's un, he's unguardable. He's, he's, he's hard to he's officiate. He's called. He's not hard to officiate. They officiate him wrong. Uh, 14 fouls yes, called against Zach Eady. One foul called on Zach Eady. It's crazy. Again, he's weird. He is the biggest man in college basketball. Weird. He is basically what Prime Shaq was at the college basketball level. If you don't Easy, believe me, if you don't Easy. believe me, he's averaging 30 and 16 Easy. in a tournament. He's averaging 30 and 16 in a tournament. Am I saying he's as good? Absolutely not. Okay, fine. It's it's well, I mean, MSU basketball fans think that if Zach Eady didn't get all the fouls called on them, that you guys would go undefeated against them. That's false. Zach Eady's a good player. Zach Eady is going to the NBA, whether you like it or not. You got to move your mic, Spinny. No. He'll be phased out of the NBA go. after one season. Zach Eady is not an NBA player. He's he's going to be he, he, late first round. Late that, first round. That okay. doesn't mean he's an NBA player. It doesn't okay. matter where you're drafted. It doesn't if mean you're a, an NBA player. But the fact that you guys aren't even giving an, a, a no. slight bit of credit. They're made the fucking Final Four. Oh, shit. Here we go. They literally, all we ever said about them was get them to the hey. tournament. They're going to choke. Do they it. have not choked. Don't yeah. do it. Whether you like it or not, they have not choked. Yeah. You can't. It's the fucking Final Four. All I hear about from MSU fans is how Final uh, Four yeah. is just support us national championship. I love it. We lost him. I love it. <laughs> so you agree with that? <laughs> what? That Final Four is just as important as national championship? No, I don't agree with it at all. My point is that a Final Four is currency in college basketball. Tom Izzo has made his legacy, and rightfully so, out of Final Fours. I'm not going to dismiss that. 
If if they would have lost to Tennessee and you dismiss Purdue, I wouldn't have even I would have slightly disagreed, but I wouldn't have hated you for that. They're going to the Final Four, and they fucking might beat NC State. They might. Actually, Zach Eady and DJ Burns. That's gonna kind of gonna be pretty cool to see them on the same court, though. I, I will say this: um, that that game has all the makings to be a ratings monster because mm -hmm. there's like a little bit yeah. of a sideshow circus yeah. to it <laughs> with the the world's tallest man against yeah. the world's biggest yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, unstoppable yeah. force versus yeah. the movable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, you just. All you need, all you need, really, is PJ Fleck out front saying, "Come yeah, on, come on, yeah, I, the world's <laughs> tallest man." I would be excited for this matchup. I, I think it would be a great matchup, but DJ Burns is going to be in foul trouble the entire game, so they're going to take it away from us. Damn. Because if he tries to box out Zach Eady, they're going to call a foul on him. I'm not going to let you dismiss Zach Eady to Purdue for a Final Four just because every foul goes his way. He's unguardable and unofficiated. He's, like I said. He's the prime shack of college basketball. Is he? I'm not saying he's prime shack. I'm just saying his level of dominance versus the rest of the competition. He's better than you guys think. You could have dismissed him after last year, and we all did, and rightfully so. But Purdue, they grew a pair. They did. They exercised some demons, and I'm not just gonna. I'm not just gonna let people just say that it's nothing. It's a Final Four. Okay. It's a Final Four. Well, they're they're going up against the buzzsaw at some point because yeah. UConn's coming to town. They are. Well, and they also have Donovan Klingon who can guard him. That'll be interesting. That I'd actually like to see that matchup. I mean, I think UConn would murder him, but yeah. getting to a Final Four is yeah. Is, no, it's I mean, a Final Four is nothing you could take away from him. No, hey, the Final Four. You got the T-shirt. You yeah. cut down the net, man. Like I saw it. I watched it. But Zach Eady's not good at basketball. <laughs> he, he's, he's definitely not an NBA player. No, definitely yeah. not. He's not going to get. 22 fouls a game when he's got Joel Embiid or Giannis Antetokounmpo guarding him. I can tell you. Or Jokic. Right yeah. Let me see him guard Jokic. Yeah. Not happening. But you, ha <laughs> but you have to admit that he did raise his profile, and Purdue as a whole did. They yeah, did it. They, they, they made did the it. Final Four for they sure. Did it. They did it. Hats off to him. It only took him shooting like 100 free throws during the tournament to make it. He also was putting up just stupid numbers. 30 and 6. That's, that, 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 that's absurd. Yeah, like 20 free throw attempts a game. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah I mean, he is. Like, like that's it's, happening. It's bad basketball to watch it's not fun watching a purdue game is not fun i well i agree it's, it hasn't been fun for years yeah. it's like watching wisconsin which has always been my problem with big 10 basketball at large mm -hmm. it's a hard this watch this brand of it purdue is. basketball is even worse it, it is even worse man and and i get like north carolina alabama like gliding up and down the yeah. floor man mm -hmm. like it was incredible to watch and then there's purdue yeah Sorry, Flannel. You can you can scream about all you want. I don't enjoy watching it. Spenny doesn't enjoy watching it. But America will watch. Are you will. are you intrigued by that though? Right? Like we are, right? Yeah. Like the circus the yeah. circus angle of it all. Yeah, I might tune in. Absolutely, Spenny. You look. You're about to say something. I was just gonna say. I just hate seeing that big ugly motherfucker elbow people in the face and not get called for it. And then when somebody puts a hand on his back, they get called for a foul. Like it. it I've been saying it for sense. years, Spenny. It doesn't like, make sense to me. Look at the free throw totals, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I am, I am, I can't wait to, because DJ Burns won't be putting up with it. I'm curious yeah. to see how the officials call it. Because at some point, they're going to stand up and swallow the whistle, man. At some point, they will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, because uh, DJ Burns, he's another one that, I mean, he's the star of the tournament. He is. There's no if ands, or buts about it. I mean, Zach Eady has obviously uh, put up monster numbers, but DJ Burns, it, it's not just his size, it's the fact that he has the feet of a dancer, yeah. can pass. he's yes. like a point center. His post games are insane. Yeah. His post, his post games, games are insane. <laughs> like that, that game last night, or yeah. yesterday, where Duke versus uh, NC State, is some of the best post game I've seen in a basketball game at any level yeah. in a long time. Mm. Looking at Kyle Filipowski and DJ Burns, both of them when they get the ball on the block is impressive, man. And I just I tweeted DJ Burns that I was like, if you beat Duke and Purdue in back to back games, you immediately become an American hero. Yeah, that's fair. And so like, I'm praying like, come on, DJ, you know <laughs> what it. to do, man. If you if you're if they're gonna call you for fouls, at least make them count. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Elbow that pussy in the ribs. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> DJ Burns actually has the mass to make those fouls count. Yes. Like, like Tennessee doesn't have a guy who 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 can do that. So yeah. 
I, I'm not even saying that I necessarily enjoy Purdue. It's just you can talk about Purdue Purdueing usually, but you can't say that this year. No, they made the final. No, big wins over Grambling and Utah State really? and Gonzaga <laughs> and Rick Barnes. Final That's four, who they beat. Bro. It's a final four. And both, also, thing, both things can be true. They made the final four. I saw them cut the nets down. I saw them get the T-shirt. They did beat Grambling and Utah State yeah. and Rick Barnes. And what used to be Gonzaga. Well, and but you could also say they beat an NBA prospect, Dalton Connect, who was on his game as well. Like Tennessee was different this year with him. That's that's also yeah, it ended about the same as it usually does. Maybe fr- maybe one further. maybe one stop further yeah. on the highway than usual. Exactly. It was, but they still didn't get to the hotel room. That's fair. Because yeah. yeah. it's Rick Barnes, and that's how and that's how it operates. Um, Shad says Edie is a glorified taco fall oh. that only eats from the free throw line. <laughs> I mean, that's nah, he's, 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 he's better. That's than tough. Taco. Oh. That's a taco fall is a much better comparison than Prime Shack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you know what I was saying. Ta- yeah, ta- taco fall didn't put up dominant numbers though. Like like Zach Edie, like <laughs> he played man. the whole game. Like he's 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 got more like finesse moves than say taco fall a more refined yeah. offensive game i saw a sean bradley comparison as well well sean bradley was like well there was a different era in the nba too i don't know if like modern day sean bradley where he'd be drafted i think he was a top five pick but this was the 90s uh speaking of that before we cut to the break i have to ask you guys all of you mm-hmm. uh tonight iowa lsu in oh, the yeah. women's elite eight, yeah, Angel Reese, the rematch. Speaking of, and look, the I think rematch. that I think it's pretty clear that us here in America, we love the stars and the storyline. I think people will watch Purdue, NC State again because of the Carnival Barker, you know, mm-hmm. world's yeah. tallest man. Yeah. PJ <laughs> Fleck is going to be outside taking tickets come with one, his little hat on. on. Yeah. Come one, come on, the monkey on the shoulder, yeah, little spider monkey with the, with the shoulder, coffee yeah. cup, you know. So <laughs> he's going to be doing that. Are you are you going to watch Angel Reese against Caitlin Clark the rematch? I kind of want to see it. You're going to tap in. I might. Tap You're being in. honest. Yeah. You're going to tap in. Yeah, it's 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 the one that could get people to watch because it's the rematch of last year's national championship. All of the uh, off the court stuff. I mean, it's it's their coach Kim Mulkey with like the yeah. Washington Post story yeah. and all that stuff. There's just all kinds of storylines with that. You going to watch Benny? Is it's tonight? Yeah. yeah. What time? Seven. No, probably not. I mean, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be at the gym. Uh, I'll t- if it's like on the TV, it, which it will be. Which I'll, yeah, I'll watch. The question I'll is, I'll tell you what, Juju Watkins from USC, she's fine. She I'll, is. I'll, I'll watch her play basketball. That's for sure. She definitely is. It will this hurt uh, Caitlin Clark if she loses again? Yes. Yes. If, well, it will spend. If, yeah. if, if Caitlin yeah. Clark, if Caitlin, if Iowa doesn't win the championship <laughs> this year, I never want to hear anybody say that she's the greatest female basketball player in college history. Talk about it, spin. Never. No, you can't say that again. You can't be the goat of a sport without winning one championship. Like we talked about, you could say she's the greatest offensive player in the in college basketball history. I'll, I'll, you could say that for sure, but not the greatest female college basketball player of all time. The more you make that statement, the more I actually can get behind it. But if but if Iowa does win, then that's just like enormous for her legacy. I mean, I think the, the way that she's perceived is going to be about the same no matter what, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about, like, tangibly with yeah. like, the numbers, accomplishments, and all of that. Yeah, I'm stunned in the chat because, remember, too, the Pistons, Wings, and Tigers are all playing tonight. Yeah. All of them. And I'm stunned at the number of people in the chat that are like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tap into that game. Uh, the the Wings, though, that's... I mean, I know we're going to talk about them. That's a... Uh, I might be, like, channel flipping on that one that's in in the tigers too i I think i'll i will like spoiler alert i'm rooting for iowa so it depends on how the uh how the game kind of goes to see how much i watch and how much i i flip between van lith is hot is van lith the girl from yukon the center uh no it's are you talking about the one bukers yeah bukers is 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 from you yeah page van lith haley van lith oh yeah it's Spenny's yeah. going to tap it. I'm telling you guys, yeah, Spenny's going to watch oh, more. Oh, she's on LSU. Yeah, I, I, LSU. He'll flip it on at the gym. Yeah, she's pretty hot. <laughs> Juju Watkins is a baddie, though. Yeah, she is. All right. I second that. 
That's enough, you guys. That's enough. <laughs> Tell them about Swiss insurance. Absolutely. You want good news or bad news? I'll give you the bad news first. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is Swiss insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you. Give them a call at 248-800-4177. Again, that is 248-800-4177, Swiss Insurance. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. And with the first pick in the 2024 Media Draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I got the number one overall seed. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Try the Chicken Shack Sandwich for free. All you got to do, make a $10 purchase and use the code Woodward. That is right. Go grab a shake and a crispy crinkle fry and your Chicken Shack will be free. Just use a code Woodward in person, online. Download the Shake Shack app today. All seven Metro Detroit locations. All right, guys, get that get that chicken check. That thing slaps, by the way. Oh, yes, man. it does. It yeah, is very man. much in play. Yeah. Very much in play, so give it a spin. Everything's Our, good at Shake Shack, man. I, what's that? Everything's good at Shake Shack. That's fast. Yeah, burger's good, too. Yeah. Burgers are really good. Like, that's yeah. probably the best fast food burger I've ever had is a Shake Shack burger. It's, yeah, it is up there, no doubt. Yep. It is up there. Uh, it's hour number two of the show. Big D Energy, Neil Rule, Flannel in for the birthday boy, Darren McCarty. We got Spencer Raxter. We got KG. We have all of you in the WoolworthSports.com chat thread. And um, the Red Wings. Um, You haven't given up. No, and, and if anything. The dream is still alive. To me, yes. I, I They're very much in play. Because here's the bottom line, guys. And I know, again. I know that we're new to this, especially like with the play or the whole playoff thing here. But remember this. For as bad as the Wings have been in the last 10 games, they're 3-5 and 2. So are the Flyers. The exact same record. So therefore, as bad as it's been, they didn't lose any ground to the Flyers. Mm-hmm. Over the last 10 games, so they won 3, they didn't lose any ground. They have a game in hand with the Flyers. They're 2 points behind. It's still on serve, Flannel. It's still on turf, and that point they got Ah. at Florida was (laughs) crucial. It was an incredible point to get because nobody, especially me, especially me, nobody was giving them any chance. I didn't think they were going to get a point in these three games. A point. They got one. It put it back on turf. Flannel, I I get it. Like, if you're not – if I said flannel – bet the flannel Sam family grocery money on the wings making the playoffs. I couldn't tell you to do that in good conscience. I couldn't. I'm not saying it's a get right. But flannel, it's more in play than people think it is. Well, you have you have a point in that that point was huge that the Red Wings got over the Panthers and that the Red Wings, they're doing their best to fuck their season, but fortunately <laughs> for us, so are the Philadelphia Jeez. Flyers. That's I mean, 3-10 and 1 in the last 15. That's fucking your season. But the Flyers are 0-4-1 and in their last five. And as you mentioned, 3-5-2 and in their last 10. And the Red Wings do have a game in hand. I just, I feel a little uncomfortable saying that what the Red Wings have done, especially if you like extrapolate this to the month of March as being on serve. They've been absolutely awful. But would I necessarily count against them to overtake Philly? Absolutely not. I think that's 100% in play. And I actually agree with you on that. I mean, just look at, 
the Red Wings and look at Philly. The Red Wings are better than Philly. They've got more top end talent. They've got more depth. I would say defensively, they're uh, they're 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 not. Well, they as used good. to have more depth. Well, they used to. Now that that is a stop short for me. They used to have more depth. Well, Remember that's what I was told. I'm but, still not uh, seeing. But your your uh, your Messiah Alex Debrinket, one goal in the last fifteen games. Not good. And not I'll good. T- I'll tell you what too. What what game was that goal in? That was in the uh, the cap the uh, Capitals game. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And he was one of the biggest reasons why you've been on this terrible streak streak when uh, when Dylan Larkin was out too. So. Sure. I know that you were up here after that game slurping to brink it, but I thought that that was malfeasance. He's been awful in these 15 games. He's a guy that has twice scored 40. And on a 15-game sample size, he's at like a just over four, five goal in the season pace. Yeah, and he also carried you for 15 games to start the season. He was carried a big it. reason carried why... why- so, so he's got to be a 70-goal guy, you're telling me? He's got to be a 70-goal guy? He can't be like a 27-goal guy. That's not what you're getting. I'm just saying that in these, he was a big reason why you guys, why the why the Red Wings had that cushion. I will give you that. I will never deny that. But he was also a big reason why the Red Wings are playing the way that they are right now. But my message to Alex Debrinket right now, the only thing I can say because you are 100% right, the Red Wings are still alive, and most of the tough part of their schedule is in the past. And they managed to steal a point from the Panthers, and they managed to get a point against Washington, and we'll see what they do against Tampa. My message to Alex Debrinket is just simply, wake the fuck up! <laughs> Jesus. I, I, I need you to hear that, Debrinket, if you're watching. <laughs> I need you all to get shocked out of your seats. I'm shocked. Because that's what Alex Debrinket needs. He's on like a five goal. He's, he's got one goal and, one Jesus, goal and six points funny. in 15 games. That's not good enough. And he still has time to write everything. He does. We all agree he still has time to write everything. And this Red Wings team still has time to make a successful season. After so, so the stretch. so the guy that's going to come in at thirty goals again, the guy that's going it, to it's his fault. <laughs> what about what about Gostasphere and all Wait. these other guys that I hear about all the time? The double digit goal guys, no. right? No, Mo- most scoring depth in the league, right? Where have they been? You're one hundred. Why are you right? not saying, "Hey, where have you guys been"? No, we're still doing this thing out here. Here's here's why, and I'll I'll, I'll give you that. Comfer, he's got four points in the last 15 games. One goal. That's unacceptable as well. Daniel Sprung has been so bad, he's been on the bench. That's not acceptable as well, given the fact that he was one of your best depth pieces for the better part of your season. Alex Debrinkit is a star. Like, that's what he... He was the only all-star on this team this year. I'm not saying that you have to... Uh, that you're not going to go through some stretches, some, some rough stretches. I mean, Alex Debrinkit even during some of his best years, maybe not his 40-goal seasons, but even last season, does have a tendency to be a little bit streaky. But my point is that his poor stretch or his um, all nearly goalless stretch has coincided with the Red Wings being 3-10-2 in 15 games. That's I, eight points in 15 games. Go ahead. I will, I will agree with Flannel on that part that he needs to wake the fuck up. Like, he, he, needs, to, he needs to wake up. This is the guy you brought in here to push you over the hump to be your goal scorer, to be that guy. So he needs to be him down the stretch for sure. Uh, Elgato, this dude is bipolar. Sean, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> bruh. Am I crazy, though? I don't think you're because crazy. Because it what if he goes on a heater right now? Like like I said, the way that you put it, I didn't necessarily agree, agree with Neil, but the fact that the Red Wings can overtake the Flyers, I agree a thousand percent. There's still time. I just, I don't want to see another... What, four or five games where Debrinkit hasn't scored? Well, at least a goal. Even six points in 15 games is bad. That's an under 41 point per year pace. So, Debrinkit, you've been, you've been sleeping. Comfer, you've been sleeping as well. I, I didn't forget about you. But there's still a chance for them to write everything because, as we've always said, as long as the Red Wings make the playoffs, it is a wildly it's pa- successful season. It's pass fail. Season. It's a wildly successful season. We'll all be overjoyed with it we'll forget all about this stretch of, of of poor hockey but they have to get out of it though that's that's the thing and they got a tough one tonight at tampa but then they've got some home games they got one against buffalo they got one against uh they got one against washington i know that they have one down the road or they got the rangers as well i, I almost that's gonna be tough as well they have one to get they have a home and home against montreal later and the flyers play tonight against the islanders it's a coin flip game. Yeah. It's a pretty much an even betting line on it. Come on, Jack Harrington. We the, need your team to come yeah. through. Absolutely. I like how we're not even worried about the Islanders anymore. No, they're so they're so, <laughs> they're so bad. 
Yeah. Um, then it's they a go on. Race. They go on a four game road trip. They're at Buffalo, at Columbus, at Montreal, at the Rangers, and they finish home against New Jersey and Washington. So you know they have the schedule edge, but then again they played Chicago and Montreal and lost nine to two combined yep. in the last two games. So things aren't going exactly great right now for them either. And that's the thing about Philly and DMAC has DMAC has reiterated this re, reiterated this constantly on the show. If there's one team that's kind of playing above their talent level that's glaring, it's Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. It's actually been a phenomenal coaching job by John Tortorella, who I don't like, but pr- hey. Credit, credit where, where credit is due, but if Philly falls on their face even more than they have been their last five games and continue to lose, nobody would be shocked by that. But then again, I don't see a ton of evidence other than schedule easing up that the Red Wings are going to turn it on either. They could. They've got the talent to. It's just they've played so poorly in the month of March. I uh, just got the alert here. Jake Wallman will be back in the lineup That's today. Good. That's after, huge. Yeah. After six-game injury absence. So Said sit Petrie's ass down, yes. please. Please. Wait a minute. Remember when they signed him? No. Spenny. He's, he's a liability. That's not what I was told. Remember when they signed him? Nope. Don't remember. Nobody said that he was going to. Like, everybody knew what? what he was. We didn't think it was going to be this bad. Yes, that is true. Nobody said he was going to be a godsend, but nobody thought he would be this bad. That's not... Remember, I got killed. I'm like, I, what's he, 35? Yeah. Like, And they're like, how can you question it? Bring yeah. him home. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Like I said, but again, that was, okay. that was some hype for sure. But. All right, that's all, that's all I wanted. We, we met in the middle there. Again, I... I didn't think he was going to be great, but I did not think he was going to be unplayable and literally the cause of like four lose- losses <laughs> in the in the past five weeks. How do you think he'd do in a QB challenge? I got to be better than how he plays defense, that's <laughs> for sure. Let me tell you about the Shake Shack QB challenge. If you could throw it on a rope, you can win two tickets to this year's home opener. It's the Shake Shack QB challenge, and this isn't one of those like, oh, sign up, and maybe you'll get a chance to do it. No, if you sign up, you are in the challenge. So you could scan that QR code right above my head, or go into any Shake Shack location to sign up, or you can go to WoodwardSports.com because we got it on our website as well. The Shake Shack QB challenge. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts, Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience. That's called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Go to FeldmanAuto.com. Find the location nearest you. All brands are represented, by the way. Whatever kind of make, model, car you want, Feldman Automotive is the move. Woodward Sports Network will be live at Feldman Chevrolet next Monday out there in Novi. They are Michigan's number one Chevrolet dealer. It's FeldmanAuto.com. All right, keeping it pushing here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Neil Rule, Sam Flannel, KG, Spencer Raxter. Uh, Iowa, a a one-and-a-half point favorite, by the way, over LSU. Mm Hmm. Just letting you know. Yeah. You better not choke. They're the favorite. That's all I'm saying. Legacy on Legacy the line. Legacy on the line for sure. I like it. I like it. I man, Spencer. He's standing on business. I mean, you see bro, the look like, in his eye? I, I love it. You can't say that. Like somebody said it in the chat. Like, what about uh Barry Sanders? He never won a championship. Yeah, Barry Sanders is the GOAT running back. He's not the GOAT football player of all time. Like, yeah. I would never say that. I don't well, think anybody would say that. Well, and also, 
being on a basketball court, being the best player and on a team that that has like five players, you, you little, affect the yeah. game more than a running back does. That is true. Like as of right now, my goat for women's college basketball is probably Maya Moore. So you got to win at least one to to get in that conversation. And if you opinion. win one with Iowa, that holds a lot of weight. Yes, yes. it does. Uh, Corey Berry, I'm blaming Neil if the Red Wings missed the playoffs. The slide started with the Amazon car flags. No, I was told that that was the priority waste patches. It, it, yeah. The patch beat the flags. Patch but... trumped the flags for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because they won. They did. They won the first game when the car. Remember when we had Car Flag Nation going? Yeah. When we single handedly brought back the Red Wings car flag? Yeah. They won an overtime winner against Chicago. Absolutely. Yeah, Patty Kane, did. get in, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tweeted a picture of the of the car flag with the moon in the background. Right. <laughs> it was perfect. Everything aligned. It wasn't even that long ago. Those were such good times. Those were right? good times. That damn trash patch. Man. It's the trash patch for man, sure. Man, man, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, again, uh, Red Wings tonight in Tampa. Tigers, Red Wings, Pistons, all in action. Oh so, And, of course, Spenny will be locked into Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Oh, yeah. Against LSU. Locked in. <laughs> Come on, Spenny. Yep. No, I'll tap in, like I said. Yo, I'm, sports take is on the line. I'll, I'll tap in. I'll tap in for sure. I'm not going to not gonna be locked in by any means, but I'll tap in. <laughs> I guess the moral of the story is it's not dead. That That's the moral of the story. Like, it's not as dead. I just don't – I can't vibe with the people that think it's, like, dead and that it's over because it's very much not. Talking about March Madness or yeah. Red, Red Wings. Yeah, Red Wings, yeah. Well, it's because of how poorly they've played. I think if you say that they're on serve or that it's they're still alive and they're in a good position, it almost feels like you're giving them a pass because they should not be in a position where they're where they're chasing someone. They should be comfortably in a play. If they would have just played average, they would probably they would be comfortably in a playoff spot right now. Have they improved? Yes, from last year, absolutely. And I'm not giving them a pass because if if you if you miss the playoffs. Then yeah, I'll be upset. I'm not. I'm not saying fire everybody and throw everybody under the bus and all. Like I'll be pissed for a couple weeks, but then we'll move on because really, even if they make the like, I wanted to look at this side of it too. If they make the playoffs, mm-hmm. win a game tops. Sure, tops. You'll play Boston, New the York. Rangers, yeah. the Panthers. I don't want. I would rather see Boston than New York or Florida. Well, yeah, Agreed. me too. But I'm. I'm just saying in general, like yeah. in generalities, right now. I just don't understand the whole. They're not in the. If the line is they're not in the playoffs, then Eiserman needs to go. And you've had five years, which he didn't. He's in effect had three years. Like that whole dealio, then I, I have a problem with people that are going to react like that. Because, okay, so the line is the playoffs for you to get in and get fillet. Yeah, because yeah. There, is, there is not a person watching this network right now, whether listening on the podcast, on iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts, a Big D Energy podcast, there, if, if you're listening to this now, if you're listening to this later in the afternoon, tonight, whenever you listen to the show, there is not a person out there that would bet any money on them beating the Bruins, the Panthers, the Rangers, whoever they have to play. You, you see what I'm saying, Flannel? Like, like we lock on to these things that really – really are kind of insignificant. Making the playoffs is not insignificant. No, it's, no, no. Well, I know I, what it is. It matter if they get bounced immediately? But it, it, it matters a ton because if you don't make the playoffs in the NHL, it says that you're not one of the 16 best teams. Okay, and so they'd be the 17th or 18th. I think in year five, you can, que- you can have questions. I'm not saying fire him. I'm just saying that if they don't, especially if well, what, they include- what questions would you have? I just asked you, have they improved? And you said yes, every single year. They've- like what? For real, what questions are there if they don't make the playoffs? Well, you can question the Petrie signing. You can question the whole signing. You can even say that uh, maybe the Comfer and Sprong ones weren't as good as we initially thought. I understand that players got to play. It's just like, yeah. especially defensively, I'll give you those. The fact that you basically have three backup goalies on your roster. I get it. Sebastian Kosa, we hope that he's that he's up very, very soon. But, like, Alex Lyon has kind of proven that he is what, what he always was, a backup. James Reimer was he's, – he started a lot of games in his career, but he's, he's more at this stage, I think, in year 14, a backup. And Ville Husso, he's obviously been hurt. But even last year, even last year when he had that stretch, his numbers were not good. Defensively, they're actually not better. 
And I'm not saying fire him. I'm just saying we treat Steve Eiserman like he's a god. As a player, you should, by the way. He's arguably the best yeah. athlete in Detroit sports history. But, but that's GM, part of the package, though, too. But it as is a, part of the package. But as a GM, We're human beings. But as a GM, he's just a man. You can say, ah, that Holder Petrie signing, that that wasn't real. That didn't. Those haven't aged well. You could say, yeah. ah, have an Ole Mata play regular minutes, e- even though I know it's uh, Lalonde who makes those decisions. What was but, the play, Flannel? Again, see this, you can't you can't just live in a vacuum with every single one of these because I go back to it and for the people that, you know, are fire Eisermen, I what was the play at the time, dude? Remember, like you have to look at this in totality, dude. You have to. That that roster that he walked into had to be cleansed. 100%. And he couldn't. He couldn't cleanse it right at the start. This isn't the NFL, man, where you can just start banging people out. Where, remember, that's what Brad Holmes did. Took a $19 million bath on three dudes. Didn't have a choice. Right. It was the only way to cleanse the roster. Right. Right. I, I guess, and that's why, and I understand this. Believe it or not, I do understand this. That's why in year five, my expectations were playoffs. Even if you get if, if you get your clock clean, I'm fine with it. Just, ma- just make the playoffs, especially given the fact that they had a nine-point they had they were up nine for the final playoff spot at one point. You can't collapse like this. You can't collapse and be just completely blameless. Like I understand the players got to play and coaches got to coach, but uh, I think if if they don't, you can have a couple of questions. I'm not saying fire Steve Eiserman. I'm not mm-hmm. even saying put him on the hot seat. But if then they, what are we talking about? But if they don't after year six, then we can start. Having, well, we're not at year six yet, man. Okay, fine. And, and, and for the record, you know what? I will save a lot of that ire for if it actually happens. Because if they if the if the Red Wings do make the playoffs, everything I say See, right I now just, is moot. The the point of all this flannel that I'm trying to get out there is, if we're being honest with ourselves, them making the playoffs and being the 16th best team versus them being the 17th best team is going to shape your entire view of this organization in the last five years and the job Steve Eiserman's done. Like being the 16th best team versus 17th best team. Yes. Doesn't that sound kind of silly? No, it doesn't. When, sound when you talk silly. through it, isn't it kind of silly? No, it's not silly because it's the playoffs. Right now, we're talking about this whole Steve Eiserman regime as not if we're going to win a cup, it's win. What that tells me, if they don't, is that some of those guys that, 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 that were brought in maybe aren't as good as we thought that they were. And I'm not talking about the Raymonds, who's had a great season. I'm not talking about or the, the Siders, Siders or, or like Larkin, of course, who he didn't bring in, but he, but he re-signed. But some of those depth guys, maybe some of those guys that haven't, gotten through the uh, minors as quickly as maybe we 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 would what's wh- again what's the realistic expectation for a guy that's drafted to come through the minors to be in the NHL I mean I think Edvinson is right about on schedule I isn't think he, he here he's here he's here okay I mean Ray- just got here right Raymond obviously was was fast tracked and Cider was was drafted a year ahead of him and fast tracked as well but like I said I think that as you said there's a there's a chance that they overtake Philadelphia I think Philadelphia might be in the middle of a tailspin that derails their season. It's just if they don't, again, I said questions. I said maybe this isn't going to end the way that we think. Because I'll tell you what, if they do make the playoffs, 100 per, we'll be we'll be basically like, you know, jerking each other off under the table. Iser plan 1919. But if he but if they don't, it's like so so one point. I I, yes. One point. Yes, yes. One point and everything's cool and here we go and not one point. Well, I don't know. You know, yes. is he the right guy for the job? I don't know. see that. That's it's stupid. The playoffs. That's stupid, dude. I sounded like Jim Mora there, but it's the playoffs. playoffs. It's the playoffs. That's significant. Talk about playoffs. Spenny, where, where are you at with this discussion, man? Uh, I understand it from both both uh, spots. Is yeah, I I expect them. I expected them to make the playoffs this year. I wanted them to make the playoffs, especially when they were year. nine points clear, hundred percent. I did too. I think they should make the playoffs this year, but also, yeah, it's not like. One point is not going to sway me on if Steve Eiserman is a good GM or not. Them not make if they miss the playoffs by one point, or they make the playoffs over Philly by one point. That doesn't change how I feel about Steve Eiserman. But yeah, I'd like to make I'd, I'd like for them to make the playoffs for sure. I think the season's a failure if you don't make the playoffs. Yeah, and that's that's all I really want to say. The season is one hundred percent a failure if they don't make the playoffs. And I think it really hammers home the expectations for year six. Like, you better. And again, this all could be... Now, that's a different discussion. Right, that's a different discussion. Year six is a different discussion. Yeah. If he didn't make the playoffs this year, the pressure would definitely ramp up. And that's fair. 100% that's fair. Alan W., I don't think most people want Eiserman fire, but a lot of people act like he is not allowed to receive any amount 
of criticism. That's all I've ever what, said. What, That's all I'm saying. But again, when all these moves were made, when we did the show, when they signed Petrie, all of you out there, you talked about being under the table. Everybody. I, I just want to know. I, mean, so I just want to know. The, what, what, what's there to be critical about? So there's what's never, there to be critical there's about? There's never been a... The whole, you want to say the whole thing? Okay, yeah. cool. But do you, you as a GM supposed to hit 100, you know, it's supposed to bat 1,000? No. Like, but by the numbers, their defense is not better than last year. And you did sign Hole. You did sign Petrie. You did sign Ole Mata the year before. You did bring in Alex Lyon. You don't have a starting goalie. That's not, I'm just, you, you, you can't just let Iserman stay But again, stay you have to, but, but then be consistent about that. When he takes over and there's nothing here and he says, wow, we need a goalie. We need a franchise goalie. Sure. What tools do I have to deliver that? Well, I better find one in the draft here. Right. I was told he's on the way, right? It That's looks, what I was told. It's looking, it's looking good for the future, but it's not. It's, it's so. Not then, what needed. did you want him to do? What did you for real? Like I, I just want everybody to come clean, man. What did you want Steve Eiserman to do? Uh, we're gonna trade four future first round picks and go get Vasilevsky. I never That's said, what you wanted. Nope, I never said like, that. Then what? All right, then tell me. Tell me what the path was for the man. Tell me. I like I said though, it, there is there. Just say you don't know. No, you're fine, but. If Say you don't know. If it's year five and you're not in the playoffs, that means it's not going as well as you think. That's all I'm saying. It's okay, by the way. It's I, not year five. It is year no, five. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, oh, no, no it's not. I literally can see one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. That's why my expectations are to make the playoffs, and I don't care what happens then. I'm not saying cop. I'm saying make it. I don't even care. It will erase. If they make the playoffs, I won't even care that they had this terrible stretch. I won't. I don't care if they're comfortably, and I don't care if they're one of the top three in their division. Be the last wild card. Who cares? Those aren't high expectations in terms of, like, an NHL team. But in terms of this team, given what he did inherit, I think it's the perfectly appropriate expectations. Okay. So his first year on the job. Yes. When he's spending $27 million on Franz Nielsen, Abdelkader, Jimmy Howard, Darren Helm, Anthony Mantha, Trevor Daly, and Sam Gagne. That, Terrible. That's year one. Ooh, that's, so that's what he's Fuck. judged on. Terrible. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. But that's year one. That was his year one. Terrible. So that so that's on his back. That's his failure. I'm, that's no. That's, yes, it is. You said that, Flannel. Uh, you said uh, that. You that's don't his get failure. Mulligan years. You don't. That's why I'm saying in year five because it's. You five. said that. That's what he wa- I, I I look. You guys know this about me. I will. I will die on the hill, and I will put this out there every single day. That was his year one. Twenty-seven million dollars on Nielsen, Abdelkader, Howard, Darren Helm, Anthony Mantha, Trevor Daly, and Sam Gagne. That was his year one. You're you just said it. Year five. All right. Well, that's year one. Yeah. So those are his sins. That's it's what rough. he did, right? No, it's not yeah. his. No, sins. no, no. Yes, it is because you're making him pay for him. You're making him pay what for I those saying? sins. Make the playoffs in year five. I'm not saying year three. I'm not saying you last year. No, you I'm are saying, saying year. year three. Because oh, that's what year, year one three. was. And next year is actually year Flannel, three tell as well me how I'm wrong. Was out. Tell me how I'm wrong about that. Tell me. Please tell me how. It's because a lot You're of, making him pay for that sin. I Because it's year five. No, I'm not yeah. saying year And that four. was year one. Okay, fine. That was a So really he was thing. supposed to save that. I'm going to walk in and I'm going to fix that. I swear to God, there's some of you that will be perfectly okay if, if, if it's like the, the... I joked about the 10-year plan. I think you're on the 10-year plan. How about, how about, how Based about 20, on what? How about 2027? Maybe they can make the playoffs. You just Maybe. said, I don't expect him to make the playoffs in three years. I gave you year one right there. So he is working on three years. He is not working on three years. If his name was Steve Johnson, so it's okay. Steve, so Sam, else, then just say that. That was year one. It was a bad That, that was his year. It was a rough and, year. No, no, no. Was Steve Eisenman responsible for that? No. So then it's not year one. Yes, it I'm is. confused. Oh, so it is year one. Yep. So he is responsible so for Brad it. So Brad Holmes get made... Get guided the Lions to the playoffs in year two. Right. And he did the exact same and it's thing. it's completely different in hockey and football. No, no, no. And, and I'm, I'm not saying he that. He did I, the football version of that when he had to flush away Trey Flowers and Jamie Collins and Jelani Tavai, and they went 3-13-1. and 13 and one. They did the exact same thing, Flannel. And, the and, nature of football is different. No, and for the record, I'm not, I'm not comparing football and hockey. Like, I'm not saying that Steve Eiserman should have gotten that all cleared out year one. Like, no, I know yes, no, that's exactly what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. Is he not, Spenny? Is he not saying that? That is kind of what you just yep. said. Yep. You know what? Let's just no, – who gives a shit what this team does? <laughs> We're all just going to be Steve Bot, Steve Bot, Steve yeah. Bot, no matter what. <laughs> Mic drop, I win, you yep. lose. It doesn't even matter. And next year is going to be year three, too, because you had a stretch when Larkin was out. That, those games don't count either, right? 
man, we don't demand anything. Um, and then the next year, year two yes. of, of your plan, um, you had Mark Stahl at just under six million, Franz Nielsen at five and a quarter, De Kaiser at five million, Darren Helm at four million, and Thomas Grice at three and a half million. Damn. That's rough. That's real rough. That's Obviously. year two. Yep. But it's, it's not three, you know. Yeah. This isn't year three, though. No, this is. I'm, like, I, I just, I have a problem, like, with people. You cannot be critical of Steve Eiserman. You, you forget really quick. You forget what he walked into here, guys. And that is my point about it. When you look at, you look at what Ken Holland left this place, it was a very Alavila-esque exit yeah. for, for Ken Holland. Mm -hmm. If we're being real about it. Can I be critical of Ken I, Holland or uh, no? Ah, uh, the ex at the very exit, Ken Holland actually cooked with the trades that he got for Tatar and Nyquist. I'll get it. He got way better returns than I was expecting. But yeah, for those yeah, guys he signed. Him trying to hold on to the playoff streak is what tanked yeah. the Red Wings for sure. Tell them about Premier Pet Supply. Premier, no tanking there. Premier Pet Supply, no tanking at all. Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC. The same great service that customers have come to know and trust on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet, Chevrolet, together, let's drive. All right, keeping it pushing here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Sam Flannel, KG, Spencer Raxter, all of you in the woodwardsports.com chat thread. Uh, Chuck Brewer wants to know, Flannel, did you order the code red? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was an elite comment. Did you order the code? <laughs> no. No, uh, Jake, Hockey Town is not deserving of the name anymore. Um, there was part of me that always thought, like, because Minnesota sold out ever since they came in the league. They've, like, sold out Minnesota. every single game ever. Yeah, but part of being... Even when they saw Part of being Hockey Town is the fact that for 15 years, the Red Wings were the best franchise in the NHL. And they're mm -hmm. the greatest Northern American franchise in the history of the NHL. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. but for those 15 years, it was franchise, period. 15 just, years, they were arguably one of the best sports in professional, or best organizations in professional sports. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Hoof hearted. You're wrong, Sam. Completely unreasonable expectations. Sean Stanley. I stand with Neil. Uh, Jeremy Anderson. Flailing flannel. These are all See, in a row, I by wouldn't, the way. I wouldn't say that his expectations are completely unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable to expect playoffs this year. I think we're maybe a little bit more aligned than we think. It's just, yeah. I bring up anything other than Steve Eiserman's doing an A-plus job as a GM, and I get and people don't like it. Travis Ellison, you're goddamn right. I <laughs> <laughs> that was an iconic movie oh, scene, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's one of the most iconic movie scenes of all time. Yeah. Um, it, it was. It was definitely good. Miki, get him, Neil. I, but I'm, listen, 
I wasn't getting him. You, you like, was a little bit. You was getting no, I was getting his people. Like those people. I was getting those people. <laughs> what do you like mean? The, right. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Another iconic movie scene. Right. Yeah. I'm the dude playing the dude disguised as another dude. dude. I, I think that the whole uh, Steve Botts and Eiserman's job needs to come into question. I think that's disingenuous, and I think it's ill-informed. And and I gave you the logic into why Steve Eisen. There is no quote heat on Steve Eiserman for me, none whatsoever. Is the organization a net positive from the year that I just described to you, when Franz Nielsen and Danny DeKaiser and Darren Helm are making fifteen million dollars a year cap? It's improved, and, and because that was COVID, was, by the way. You know what's mm. vastly improved is the farm system, and that is a thing that goes hand in hand with being a GM. They have. One of, if not the best farm systems in the NHL, and that's because of, solely because of from Steve one Eisenman. of the worst. Yeah, from and one I, of the I worst. Saw, saw, I saw somebody um, comment it in the chat that they're not putting Steve Eisenman on the hot seat yet, but I think it's time for the youth movement to start, and I would agree with that. I want, yeah, and that's fair. I want to see Wallander or Johansson. Okay. To be brought up next year and be one of the starting defensemen on this team. And and we we talk about like next year. And Derek Lalonde is is one that's got to come in because things were humming. 100%. And you can you can agree or disagree about his philosophies of, and and look, he's the same guy that had the, that presided over like that fifteen and four run or whatever, sure, right? Sure. My only issue is, and I'm not I'm not a hockey coach, so take this with a grain of salt. Like I'm just sitting up here with a microphone. I'm not you know I don't cover the NHL. I don't call every game and stuff like that. My only issue was. It seemed like some excessive tinkering with things. Sure. Like making moves just to make moves. Yeah, and it's it's not working right now. And also, and I know that there's a lot more that goes into it, but if the Red Wings don't make the playoffs, they collapsed. In some way, they, they uh, collapsed. Whether it's an epic collapse or they actually play okay the last, start, the last stretch and they just lose out to Philadelphia or Washington. That's coaching. That somewhat is on coaching because not only were they losing, they were getting blown out at Arizona. They were getting blown out at home by Arizona. Mm-hmm. They were they were losing they were losing at Buffalo, which I get it. Road 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 games are tough, but when when you count that as one of your losses, that's one you got to have. You at least got to get a point. They were losing at Pittsburgh, another getting blown out at Pittsburgh, a team that is worse than you, a team that is not going to make the playoffs. That's that that's coaching us. See, I'm, like, and I, and I know, like, you're gonna say that flannel, like, a quote unquote collapse. And yes, it's been bad. And all of a sudden, the Capitals came out of nowhere and went eight one and one in, sure. in a ten game stretch. You know what I'm saying? And then, then the Islanders, they were red hot. Now they're two seven and one in their last ten. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if you don't ultimately make it, your your stretch is more costly. That's all I'm saying. Like, when you're when you're actually in a playoff run, which the Red Wings have been. I would say since uh, since end of January for sure, probably even before that. Yeah, before that, before that, even, really, yeah. this whole season. Right, right, a hundred percent. They just got off to a, to a slow start in the calendar year of a twenty twenty three. You can't afford stretches like this. I mean, we we saw how hard. Well, we're going to find out if you can or not. Sure, but 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 they're they were nine points ahead for the last playoff spot, and now they're out of it if the season ended today. That's that's more my point, and I get it. If the Red Wings do do come back and actually make it, uh, it won't matter. Doo doo. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> doo doo Brown. Ah uh, yes. All right, I, I'm doing a bad job of this, and we got to get there. I need to talk about the NFL draft. Just, <laughs> All right. I got I got to put my first toe in the water here with the NFL draft. I still got time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I'm not being negligent. I still got time, but I, I do want to get there. Just like I want to get to Planet Fitness, everybody. We're live at the Planet Fitness Studios. You guys know what it is they still got the deal going on you get access to your home club dollar down 10 bucks a month everyone's talking about inflation and stuff like that here's plan of fitness over here yeah dollar down 10 bucks a month so Never change. That, That's a good point. i'm just saying yeah. the black card still a dollar down 24.99 a month plan of fitness they're not talking about you know juicing every dollar they can out of you. They just want to provide you a good gym and a comfortable place to work out in a judgment-free zone, and that's exactly what it is. I love my membership at Planet Fitness. You guys heard me talking about it a lot. Coconut Creek, Florida, Saturday went in there and got it in. Shout it was out. awesome. Doesn't matter because there's over 2,500 Planet Fitness locations across the world. There's over 50 in Metro Detroit alone. You want to be a part of it all? All you gotta do is pull in the parking lot. 
and join there. As we said, over 50 of them Metro Detroit. Or log on the computer. Go to planetfitness.com. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 Media Draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. What's better than crispy chicken and pizza while watching your favorite team play? Let me tell you about Soroki's crispy chicken and pizza. Their food is amazing, and their locations are popping up all over Metro Detroit. A perfect takeout option featuring ham bread and fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salads, sides, and more. Check out their full menu and find the closest Soroki's near you at Soroki's.com. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. Soroki's and Woodward Sports. Now that's crispy. Keeping it pushing here, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Um, talk about the White Sox still uh, coming. I think I touched a nerve with that. A uh, Weezy D three one three. The Southside City Connect jerseys go hard. Those, yeah, that's the one I yeah, got. It's yeah. the Southside jersey, but it's got it's Michael Jordan. 45. Shout out Birmingham Barons, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he ever played for the White Sox. No, he didn't. No, he did. <laughs> Spring training, I believe. He did. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, he did. He got he got hits in games for the White Sox. Did he? That was just spring training. Oh yeah. I think he had a double at Wrigley Field, didn't he? I Down want, the third baseline. I want to say that that was like a spring training game at Wrigley Field, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I didn't. I didn't think he got any time at the big leagues. We can. Uh, Lorena Rios, Neil, quit deceiving yourself. Wear the glasses. I forgot again. And you know what, Lorena? I, I meant to put them on and I forgot. Here we and go. And then like I'm wired up. What do you mean? Here we go. You purposely are forgetting the glasses. We gonna have to get you one of them little lanyards. Yeah, <laughs> <hell> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the next. The, step, the rubber cord. Yeah, the next. That's the yeah. Next step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is like the third time you said you've lost your I glasses. I did. I, f- I forgot. You know what? Fine. You're like Here. Velma. Come on, now. My glasses. I can't see Let anything. My glasses. My glasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, let me get. Let me get my glasses. <laughs> you guys know where my glasses are. <laughs> Is this the uh, the uh, like the Superman uniform? Right, yeah. glasses. <laughs> there he is, Clark Rule. Right. Clark Rule is at the building. <laughs> Neil Kent. Neil Man, Kent. I can see the screen better. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I told you again. Full disclosure: twenty twenty vision up until about here, especially yep. on a white background. Yep. Then it's two fourteen after that. <laughs> yeah, no, RM Doyle says, "Ooh, what you know about good food, Spencer? I know a lot about good food. And I'll tell you what." New York style pizza is the best style pizza. I do like New York style a lot. You know what? You're right. It's like yeah. Detroit style pizza, overrated uh, in my opinion. I will. I wouldn't say that. It's overrated. Let's not opinion. go that far. I will. The, I, the I, Detroit I'm, deep dish is up I'm there, around man. over square any day of the week. Give me a round pizza 10 times. I am with you on that. Yeah. I, I prefer round pizza. But if I'm going to eat, like, if I'm going to eat Detroit style pizza, it's going to be from Louis. Like, Louis is the best. Detroit style pizza in the in yeah. the world. You don't like buddies at all? I like buddies, but Louis is better. I'm telling you. If you haven't been to Louis, it's at like uh nine and Ryan over okay. there. Oh, okay. Park. It's, yeah, it's yeah. reachable. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's cool. I might check them out. George Ribbo, Neil Rule the Librarian. <laughs> or Nine and John R. I think. I don't know. Yeah, Nine and John R, I think. But yeah, it's in Hazel Park. Yeah. By the Hazel Park Raceways, or where they used to be. Nice. Yeah, right. Yeah. Lorena Rios. Neil, you are welcome. Thank you, Lorena, for reminding me. <laughs> Let me get my glasses. All right, NFL draft. I wanted to get like in the weeds a little bit. The yeah. nerd in the dork at 11. So let's go nerd in the dork. <laughs> nerd in the dork. Which What's one? your favorite element? <laughs> we Copper. did that one. <laughs> Tungsten, right? <laughs> and yeah, uh, Detroit Dabber says, JFC Spenny, you don't like Punchkey or Detroit-style pizza? 
I don't not like Detroit style pizza. I would just much rather have New York style pizza. And I, yeah, punch I like suck. The, I like the thinner crust too. Yeah, I do. But I will. I will. I do like the Chicago deep dish. I've never oh, had Chicago deep you dish. You should. You would yeah, enjoy it's, it. It's oh life changing. I've never had Chicago. Yeah, deep yeah it's so it's good. absurd. You haven't gone to Chicago. Yeah, never been yeah. to Chicago. I've been to Cali tw- ten times. I've yeah. Been to, yeah. yeah. When you go, when are you guys going? Virgin go Islands. Uh, I think June. Perfect. Yeah. 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 You're gonna love it, dude. Yeah. Chicago is awesome. Yep. Get stop at a pizza place. Got yeah, you. Uh, Giordano's. Giordano's. Yeah. 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 You whatever. You yeah. know. I want to go to the, the, the Italian beef place too. Al's. Pulse. Al's Italian beef. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You no, go have a good no time, diddy. man. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited. It should be fun. Man, like you will do very well there in Chicago. Yeah. All right, the draft thing. Yeah. So I did want to bring this up because I wanted to talk about like my initial thoughts on who the Lions should get and stuff like that. But then it happened again. Didn't Drake May have his pro day? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. And like. Has, it begs the question because I hear everybody talk because now he's back all of a sudden. Like Drake May is. <laughs> has anybody ever had a bad pro day? No, not not a Johnny I'm, Manziel had a great pro day. Zach Wilson had a great Zach pro day. Wilson had a yeah. transcendent pro day. Yeah. Like has anyone ever has anyone yeah. ever walked out of someone's pro day and went? I mean, that's what they're uh, set up to do. They're set up to make you look great. Yeah. So, no, absolutely not. How can all of a sudden Drake May be back? And now J.J. McCarthy's falling a little bit. I like, and we do this every you, year you, we do you this. You know how the draft works, man. This is just the QB carousel is what they call it. So, <laughs> I've, I, For real, like I've had enough with it. Like I'm out on pro days from now. I am th- – there are a lot of things that I just totally dismiss in yeah. the world of sports. And now pro days is going right up to the top. NFL pro days – Useless. Well, because at pro days, you're at your you're at your school. Obviously, you're right. just doing practice drills. If you're a quarterback, you get your receivers yeah, and everything. Yep. So I understand why why some might think pro days are kind of like don't really matter. I think Sam Darnold had a great pro day as well. I mean, just just you've never had a heard great first game too. <laughs> hey, that's that, that's also facts. He was, pretty, he was pretty good for Carolina as well. But but anywho, let's uh let, let's uh, move on from that. I I think. Especially when it when it comes to quarterbacks, there's always hype around a pro day because if you're a prospect, you have some tools. And if there's no defense, if you're not even playing seven on seven, if you're just basically saying, "Hey, wide receiver that I probably played with for four or five years, go run a post or go run a slant or go run a go route," you're gonna have that synergy with them and you're gonna look great. So I don't know why JJ McCarthy and Drake May are flip flopping or one's falling depending on the day, just based on pro days. Look at the tape. Just look at the tape. Uh, real cream of wheat. There's like two to three quarterbacks that are worth a first round pick, then everyone else gets overdrafted, overrated, like clockwork. And, and real cream of wheat, look, like I get it, right? Because I would, if I were a GM, I would always shade towards taking the quarterback as well because it's the biggest discount mm-hmm. to market in sports. Mm-hmm. If you hit one, it is the biggest value in all of sports. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a critical component. It's also the hardest thing to hit. And it's also the hardest thing to hit, too. So. You know, if if I will never blame a GM if if I was rooting for a team, I get what the Carolina Panthers did. I do. Now it's going to sink them yeah. for mm-hmm. for a little while. Yeah, I understand it, but I also too I didn't hate it. And like everyone's going to come back like clockwork. And there were no CJ Stroud fans here in this chat that watched this show. None, zero, except maybe for Spenny. Yeah. And that was about it. I like CJ Stroud. Yeah, it's, it's a stigma on Ohio State quarterbacks until, until it's not. And that's what I, that's what I said. That's uh, that was the thing I fought the hardest. Was I don't give a shit about that. Right. That, I don't that was the most overrated thing in my life. What Ohio State quarterback is made? CJ Stroud was obviously the best pro style quarterback in the history of Ohio State, and yeah. he proved it. Well, and that's and that's the thing because you're right. At the time, there was a there were a lot of Bryce Young fans. Yeah. And Spenny, you you always called him like five one. Yes. And honestly, <laughs> he looked 5-1 out there sometimes. He, did. he had one of the worst rookie seasons ever. And I'm not ever for any like for any top-rate quarterback. And I'm not saying that it was all his fault, but you just didn't see even any of the you didn't see somebody who looks like a number 1 overall pick talent. I think CJ Stroud, he got knocked for the Ohio State thing. He got knocked for like his low Wonderlick score. And he also a lot of my fellow Michigan fans, and I don't even necessarily hate you for doing it, but I wasn't doing it for the record. Were like he couldn't beat Michigan. That was a knock for some. But went crazy against Georgia. Absolutely. And was costed a national championship by his field goal kicker. His field goal kicker and I think the offensive play call. I think yeah. they they should have tried to get the ball to like the 20 or the 25. But no, mm-hmm. I've, I like C.J. Stroud. 
but I never, nobody ever thought, I didn't think that he would be so far above Bryce Young that Bryce Young can't even see C.J. Stroud. I it's, did. Bryce Young's 5'2". You did. Yeah. You, you, Spenny? <laughs> and look at the situation like, he came into. Adam you, Thielen yeah. is your best receiver. Yeah. I mean, no offensive line. What you, what you, did C.J. Stroud even turn Lucas Klotz? Nobody yep. hated that man more, that than, more than Lucas Klotz, and, and he's all on the seat. But how, how, could you, how, how could you not be? He's yeah. one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Mm-hmm. Top five. No, absolutely. So, and, and that's why, again, going back to the comment, that's why I understand it, how you're going to see this, right, where three dudes get taken in the first round, three quarterbacks get taken in the first round that ultimately aren't going to be that good, probably. The math says, you know, the, the trends and the probability say that they won't be yeah, that sure. good. But I get it, and I would never be mad at my franchise for taking a swing at it because if you hit, yeah, you know, if you get a Lamar Jackson, if you get a Patrick Mahomes, yeah. like it changes your franchise. And look, I know everyone wants to get granular about Lamar and everything like that, but the bottom line is they're a perennial yep. playoff team mm-hmm. that you know wins games here in the playoffs. Now, has he gotten over the top? No, he hasn't. But that's the next. That's the next stop, like the progression, like Lamar. And Josh Allen and those dudes are all at the same exit of the highway, right? They're stuck in the same traffic jam right now. Yeah. They're trying Allen to get through be, the construction. Josh Allen might be off the highway. But. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so, so Lamar's on it and Josh Allen's off it. That's, I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, and look, you know that, that was, me. Those KG's words, not yours. Yeah. <laughs> and you know me, dude. Like, I'm not, I'm not a huge Josh Allen guy right. because he's a bit flippant with the football, i.e. he turns it over a lot. And, you know, for me – I, I view Lamar differently than I do Josh Allen, but whatever. Again, we're not getting granular. I don't want that to be the topic right now, even though I know in three, two, one, it will be, but I just won't read it, so I won't give it life, so then we'll take it away, and that's not what I'm getting at here. That's the nature of this, right? Like the draft, the first-round quarterbacks, all that kind of stuff. Then they're good, and they pop up, and then you get like a three-year, four-year honeymoon, and then the questions start if you don't win the Super Bowl by then. You're basically saying that Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson are two quarterbacks who have had excellent regular season yeah. success but haven't won a Super Bowl. But they were the right picks. At, oh, a thousand percent. Be- because, because you got the va- you got the value to build your to build out your roster. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there aren't many Brad Holmes out there. Yeah, I mean Joe Flacco, he was on his last legs. Black and, Daddy. And I mean Elite. He, you thought he was on his last legs, but right? that, that's another story for another day. You brought Come in Lamar Jackson. The Ravens have been a winning team ever since. And of course, we all know what the Buffalo Bills were in the in the time between Jim Kelly and Josh Allen. So yes, those were wildly successful picks. It's just Ooh. If they don't win the soup, but they're also playing in the Mahomes era too. Mike, oh, top five overrated local foods. <laughs> uh, can you get five? I got five. I can, I can, oh, I can get yeah. to five, yeah. but yeah, might lose a sponsorship or a sponsorship opportunity doing that. Yeah, but. yeah, that's not good. For, way to talk that through, Spenny. Yeah. Good. That's not good for business. Punch game by not. far number one. Yes, easily, easily. It's up there. One. It's in the now, list. Root it's beer, on the list. A and W root beer. Whoa, up there. Whoa, whoa. Burners up there. Whoa. whoa. I'm not a ginger ale guy. Slow your row, man. I hate it's Benny, Wilson, it's Benny's hell bent on just torpedoing his career right it's now. It's not just <laughs> Verner's. I don't like Canada Dry or Schweppes or anything. Okay. I, just, okay. I don't like ginger ale. Okay. okay. Fair. But it can cure you. I love pasties. Pasties are good. Mackinac Island fudge is great. I'm just not a, I'm not a ginger ale guy. So. See, I'm I'm kind of with you on the Mackinac Island fudge thing. Like it's too much. Oh, I love it's it. Too, no, it's too rich. It. It's too rich. I love. I, I love haven't had it yet. So. Per- certain pierogies are overrated. Says Wyatt Bear. Well, they got to be good pierogies. <laughs> I love pierogi. Obviously, you know I'm Polish, so I love pierogi. Shout out Shrodex and the Coney pierogi. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out Petrick pierogies. Absolutely. Shout out uh, Wyatt Bear. Verner's overrated, Spenny. Can we chat, Paul? Is like, Verner's overrated? I said, oh. like, it's, it's not just Verner's. It's, I don't like You don't like a root beer. Either. I don't like root beer either. I mean, it's not just A&W root beer. So beer's root beer as a whole. All okay. root beer. Fair, yeah. fair. fair. Cobzilla says Spenny chose violence this morning. He did. Can we put it in the chat, Paul? Is Verner's overrated? That's crazy. I think it's good. I like that. I'll give me a Sprite over a ginger ale any day of the week. Oh, see, that's, I, I'm not, I can't vibe with you on that. Yeah. The Boston Cooler, which I don't know why it's the Boston Cooler, they See, call it. But the I, Verners with the ice cream, elite. I don't like Boston Coolers or root beer floats. No thanks. I'm, I just had a root I'll beer do, float If, three if you're days making ago. floats, just put, put Coke in mine. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not, it doesn't cure disease or anything like that no, like people talk but, about. But it's a very fine it's, local soda. It's good. It feels good, though. Like, like, Verners to me hits differently than, say, Dr. Pepper. I feel like I'm kind of taking a little medicine, you know? Right. 
Oh, I'm taking a Dr. Pepper 10 days a week. Well, obviously, Dr. Pepper tastes better than Verner's, but Verner's is medicinal, man. Uh, Give me, like uh, I said, give me me a Sprite over Verner's any day. And again, it's not just (laughs) Verner's. It's just ginger ale in general that I don't like. And flannel, give me a Lady Jane's haircut over any other place any day of the week. Just had one. Look at this. Thank you. Thank you. It was Tasha. Shout out awesome Tasha. when a guy can be a guy and shout get, out get an amazing that, haircut. Right. Absolutely. That's, shout out. Shout out. That That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in and sit back and relax and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Neil Rule here for woodwardsports.com slash shop. Hoodie season, beanie season, because it's still in the 30s every single morning. You wake up. So go to woodwardsports.com slash shop. Gear up that way. Get ready for the draft. You want the Amon Ross St. Brown Sun God shirt. You want the Stoke Not Scared shirt. Are you a Brad Holmes guy? Get the Brad Holmes. I got to get one of those, by the way. Brad Holmes guy uh, t-shirt. Get a Steve Eiserman one, too, even though the rest of you hate him, but I don't. Go to (laughs) woodwardsports.com slash shop. Get geared up today. Keeping it pushing, final segment of the show. Big D Energy, Sam Flannel in for the birthdaying, daying, uh, Darren McCarty, Spencer Raxter, KG, all of you. WoodwardSports.com Chapel, is Verner's overrated? 26% of you say yes, and I'm surprised. Are you surprised it was that high? Um, That's about where I thought it would be, because I know there's a faction of people. And ginger ale as a whole, I don't think it's as highly thought of as, say, like Coke or Pepsi or Mountain Dew or Dr. Yeah, Pepper or, or, or stuff like that. It's just... I don't know. In Michigan, I know Verner's is Verner's is king. The two worst pops to me are ginger ale and root beer. I disagree with that. Really? That's wild. Yeah, it is. Because I don't, I don't dig Sprite. I love Sprite. Sprite is probably my favorite. You can't pop. even consider ginger ale a pop, can you? Just because it's fizzy, that don't make it a pop. I mean, it's carbonated, yeah. it's yeah. soft drink. What about it's carbonated? Squirt? There's a million grams of million uh, grams of sugar in there. Yeah. So yeah, I think it qualifies. <laughs> yeah, what about yeah. like Squirt or Fresca? I Squirt's think Squirt's good. Are, ah, I like Squirt. You like. I don't even think I've ha- I don't think I've ever had a Fresca. Does Fresca even exist anymore? I don't know. Yeah, I used to I put I used to put Gilby's gin in Squirt back in the Squirt's day. Squirt's good. Yeah. Squirt's a great chaser. Yeah, it is. It's uh, a great chaser. That's great like I said, my pop hierarchy is like Sprite. I don't drink pop that much, but Sprite, yeah. Dr Pepper, Wild Cherry Pepsi. Mm. I like Wild Cherry. Pepsi. Mountain Dew's up there. Cherry Pepsi, Cherry Coke. Yeah, yeah. I vibe with those. Oh yeah. Going right to Speedway after the show. Cherry, <laughs> cherry vanilla, Dr. Pepper. Right. You have an addiction, sir. I do. Yeah. I do. That's my vice. Yeah. No. Y'all got any more of that? Yeah. Cherry Pepsi? I used to be the same way, man. Oh, I need to I stop do love it. I cherry had to take a year great. off pop before, but luckily it's the best thing I ever did. I don't drink as much pop as I used to. But. I, got my, I think da- I do that myself. Day juice. Melted cheese on top of a burger is criminal. What? what? You you can, you can melt cheese on top of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese makes everything better. Yeah, it Literally does. everything. It does. I don't know if I go that far, but a burger, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Danny G, Squirt is nasty too. Right under that day, you Squirt is top tier. Oh, so Squirt's good, man. And the ruby red Squirt. Ooh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that's nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, up metalhead, red pop is the best in rock and ride. No red rock and ride. Rock and I don't ride. like rock and ride. Either. Rock and ride all day. Not a rock and ride guy. What? I think this is a good place. To I love re- <laughs> I love red pop. It's a good I, place to stop. I love red pop. Uh, yeah, moon mist is good. 
the regular. So you like cola. Dr. Pepper, but you don't like Rock and Rye. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Rock and Rye tastes more like root beer than Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I am. I'm kind of with Spenny on this one. I'm a Red Pop over Rock and. No rye. one asked you. <laughs> that's fair. Right. Nobody that's asked fair. you. That's fair. All right, all right, tomorrow. Red Pop's probably the best Vigo. NFL draft stuff tomorrow. Let's go. I'm getting into it. Yeah. And then also too, Spenny's recap of Iowa and LSU. Oh yeah. Uh, is Caitlin Clark really her? We'll see. I mean, she's got two games to to do that. It's not just beat LSU and you're hurt. You got to win the chip. It's. I think this is the. I think it's three games. This is the elite yeah. eight, right? Three, oh yeah. I think this is the elite. So Spenny will break it down. Couldn't tell. Possession that. by possession. <laughs> yeah. Caitlin Clark, what he liked, what he didn't like, all of it. Some Red Wings react as well. Hopefully they can steal something tonight. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we'll do it. Go so, Tigers, man. Go Tigers, go man. Tigers. Yeah. At the go Mets. Tigers. Is Mets. You, are you on board? Steal seventy nine wins for you. Um. I don't. I look. We could be nine and zero. Oh. We could. We could very well be nine. But and open a day will be nuts. Mets are Mets are favorite. I that that is what I do want. Yeah. I do want. I do want the juice, man. Give me, give me five and one, whatever. Oh, yeah. and that's, my that's god, attainable. going into opening yeah. day man. against the Athletics. Too. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, Stop even it. you would even have taken at the beginning of the year four and two going into mm-hmm. go, going in now. Now I want five and one minimum, but even four and two is not a bad. I want to see Reese Olsen put up a quality start. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He is one I have questions about. And Casey Myers. And Casey I want to see Casey Myers. I have less I questions. Think, about I don't Casey. think they'll let Casey Myers go more than four. Probably not, but you still want to see Did they say that? Right? Like, is he going to no, be on? No, like they a... haven't said that, but I assume that's what they're going to do. And Fayetto looked pretty good when he, when yeah. he went out there yeah, he for, I've always uh, liked, for Fayetto. Fayetto's one I've always liked. Yeah. Really? Everybody yeah. but Alex After Lang, season? man. Yeah. Everybody but Alex Lang mm-hmm. look, looks that's a, that's a strange horrible. hill to die on, the Alex Fayetto. I didn't say he's going to win the Cy Young. Like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, calm down. <laughs> yeah. No, I said I like Alex Fayetto. He... I, He's scoreless. A good, he's a good long inning yeah. guy. He was scoreless. He like a lot of Tigers were this, yes. this week. I, I am, I'm very concerned about Maeda, though. Very concerned. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, he and it was. I was concerned. I, I but was I was concerned just, before Louis you. Louis Robert. Louis Robert. Man. He but just, he was throwing him hanging sliders was, every at bat. Like, he was. I think that's he'll the get only better. guy you got to avoid in the White Sox lineup, and he was throwing him meatballs over the middle. I think he yeah. just had his number. I think he'll get better as the year goes on. Yeah. I mean, he can't we'll get worse. He can't get worse. <laughs> like, yeah, that's fact. The, the Reds, when, when did the Mets the Mets sign Shaw Manea? Yeah. Really? I didn't know that. Mets minus 135. I don't like that either. I've heard Shaw Manea. They're not, they're not going to lose every home game. I think we're not going to win every road it's, game. It's because we're playing a back-to-back and flying from Chicago to New York. And the, the, the Vegas might not like Reese Olsen as much as we Tickets do. as low as $7. For a Ooh, Mets game? At City Field. It's crazy. Damn. They're, they're, they don't have high expectations. Though. Yeah. 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 All right, that'll do it. Tomorrow, we're going to get deeper into the NFL draft. All right, I do want to start taking a look, see whether, who they're going to take, where they're going to take, all that kind of stuff. For Flannel, for KG, Spencer Raxter, I'm Neil Rule. Thanks for tapping in. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Well, see you later. I'd rather get laughed at for trying than to stand on the sideline and just watch. Whether I look like, like a dumbass or I, I, I fail or I'm like cringy, at the end of the day, like we're, we're all going to die. Like, like that's kind of my my thing for life is just yeah. I'd rather get made fun of for trying than just be too afraid to try it all. <laughs> physically drizzled. He's physically drizzled, baby. <laughs> he needs to be put in better positions to succeed, and I don't think he's getting that opportunity right now. This mofo spit. He spit. Oh my lens is spitting for sure. Poor OJ. I don't believe that anybody.